Do we have sound now? Do we have sound? <laughs> Never can go off without a hitch. <laughs> oh, the fun of doing it live. All right. All right, one sec. Just want to make sure we're good. Okay, so you guys can hear me now? Can, can you hear me now? Can, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, you can hear me now. Okay, perfect. Uh, all right, so we should be okay. Hopefully you're okay. Anyways, what I was miming to you there was, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today we're playing uh, one of my favorite games, Scythe, a uh, game in my top 10. One of my favorites of all time. Played it a bunch. Haven't played it so much recently. We did a, um, we played Rise of Fenris live on the channel, did a playthrough of that with four players. Oh, a few months ago. That was like the last time I was really having to scythe. Um, but I do love the game. I love pulling it out every now and then and playing it. It's great. Oh, such a good game. Such a good game. Uh, yeah, and shame on you. I see Spencer in the chat saying, not familiar with this game, but excited to see how it plays. Shame. Shame on you, Spencer. Shame on you for not playing this game. Wow. Yeah, I just assumed everyone's played it by this point. Uh, this is like one of the highest rated games for sure. I, I'm... Like, 99% sure it's got to be in the top 100, right? Before I say that and find out it's not. <laughs> uh, let's see where it's at on BGG. Uh, So, yeah, it's 11th overall on BoardGameGeek of all board games ever made right now. Yeah, number 11 in the strategy category, my favorite category of games. And yes, it was re-implemented by super heavy game called My Little Scythe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great game uh, designed by Jamie Stegmeier uh, and published by Stonemeyer Games. But yeah, it's, it's oh, so good. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, this game is so great. Love it. Um, sorry, tickle in the throat. BRB. Okay, I think I'm done hacking my brains out. We should be good. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <laughs> Spencer's embarrassed. <laughs> no, go watch some reviews on it, Spencer, or just stay here and watch the playthrough. It may not be for everyone. It's an engine builder. My favorite engine building game. Uh, I see some comments saying uh, they're not sure about putting it at 11th overall. Uh, keep in mind, I believe it's 11th overall. If you're playing it like four or five or more players, uh, which you need expansion to go over five, I believe. Um, but this game is pumped out expansion after expansion, has a kind of legacy campaign expansion that has like 11 modules in it that you can mix in modules, take out modules, tons of other stuff in there. There's even a co-op mode I've yet to try that's in that expansion. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of spoiler filled stuff that's locked away in boxes and stuff that you can play through. And we do have a playthrough on that channel of, of that on the channel, but spoilers, uh, big time for that. But yeah, you can get upgraded components for this. I have like the metal coins, the realistic looking. Uh, there's like multiple companies that make make stuff for this game because it's so popular. It's just been a great seller ever since it, it released. It was a Kickstarter game, I believe. I didn't get into it on Kickstarter. I got it in, when it hit retail later uh, after like I figured it was a good game. But then it, it was a game I played and I'd already liked deck builders at the time. But then I played this and this like the engine building this just blew my mind. I love the idea of area control. That's like what got me into modern board gaming was my favorite mechanic was area control at the time. Uh, and this has area control. It has combat, but it's like a tension whether or not you do combat. You could play it aggressively and fight, but you only have so many resources. Uh, you could play defensively. You could not fight at all. You can play in your own little bubble if you want. 
Um, but yeah, it's just building your own engine, getting you going. This is like, I just love so many things about this game. Um, yeah, and I just love playing it multiplayer. I've never played solo until two days ago, maybe. I've played it twice now solo just to learn on easy and one on normal. So today I'm going to be playing on normal as my third time ever playing solo. So keep that in mind. If any of you are solo pros in the chat, um, solo has a learning curve and additional rules to it. It's no joke. This is not just like, hey, we give you a little deck of cards that runs the AI and that's all you need to do. To do and it's like a one or two pages of additional rules. No, to play solo of Scythe has its own freaking rule book that is 12 pages long. A 12 page rule book just to do the solo editions, which uh, that didn't give me a good vibe at first. Uh, I'm still not sure if I like the solo in this, to be honest, uh, but I'll play it here. It is a way to play Scythe. If you love Scythe, it's a way to play it without other players. Uh, but I've only tried it with one solo deck, but there is an app. There is a, uh, a web app too that you can open in multiple tabs and whatnot, and you can buy uh, additional decks or they have the print and play files where if you know how to get decks printed, uh, you can get more decks, uh, but in the box only comes one deck. I'm playing with the physical stuff. I dabbled with the Scythe Kick app, uh, and then I saw you could only run one opponent in there unless you pay. So I don't want to show off the game as solo for the first time and then tell people the only way they could do what I did was to pay more money. So I want to pay. I, I want to play with just the base that comes in the set. In the future, I want to do a live stream playing solo and have like two or three or four opponents. I'm sure that is probably more fun play-wise. It would take a lot longer. Um, but if you're not a fan of this deck system and the additional movement rules, uh, I don't see adding more of decks and more opponents improving that at all. But I was kind of blown away. Uh, Viticulture, yes, uses uses Automa. Okay, Automa is just a brand name of a guy who designs these uh, solo modes in different games. Uh, he's just coined the term Automa. So that's just a that's just the thing. That's a brand name of a company that Stonemaier Games pays and other companies pay to design solo versions of their games. Um, right here, the Automa Factory. Okay, Automa Factory. It's like a one man, a one man team. At least it used to be. I don't know if it still is. But anyway, uh, it's kind of funny on the start of the rules. Uh, it talks about hey, to keep it simple to run the opponent, uh, we've just removed all these rules. So I'm actually going to show you guys this here. Uh, to try to get you in. So if you don't know Scythe, I have a link down in the description below, the how to play video over on Watch It Played. Uh, fellow awesome Canadian Roddy Smith did an amazing job on that. I use it to send to other players to watch before they come over and play it or to get a refresher on the game. Great video, well done. Can teach you Scythe in not too long time, like 30 minutes, 30 something minutes. Uh, so I recommend if you're watching this later on YouTube, stop, go watch that uh, and come back and you'll know how Scythe works. I'll try to explain things as I go along, but I don't want this stream to be like four hours of me teaching Scythe, then teaching solo mode and doing a playthrough. There's lots of how to play Scythe online. Uh, there is also rule book PDFs. There is also how to plays for just the solo mode. And that was the other thing that blew my mind was when I looked up how to play Scythe solo in video form, just to like watch and see what was out there. Uh, they're all like an hour long minimum to teach you just the solo mode of Scythe, not the regular game, just to teach you the solo mode has a one hour video. That blew my mind. I was almost going to just cancel the stream and not play because I was like, man, I don't want to learn a whole new way to play Scythe in a whole new game. But it's not as bad as I thought. And I'm going to show you here. So uh, let's go to the book. Uh, so this is the Scythe Automa book that I was just waving around. This is the PDF version available on the website. So if you're curious and you want to read more details, uh, the components it comes with, I'll show you all that stuff uh, in the playthrough here. Uh, so as a player, you follow the same rules as you would in a game against another human. The Automa, however, follows a simplified rule set. So they say, so they say that's uh, not true in my opinion, uh, purposely designed to reduce the burden of running the Automa. Okay. I'll get to, I'll get to the good stuff soon, but I'm, I'm being a little negative here. Uh, so the Automa here, here's, they simplified it. So they don't have recruits, structures, upgrades, objectives. They don't change their popularity score. So don't accidentally move it. Something else you have to keep track of. They don't produce resources, but they have a special system on how to give you resources if you tackle an area they're in. They don't pay any cost to take actions. Okay, you just move them around. That's like normal in most games with uh, solo rules. They don't use tunnels, so don't accidentally do that. Uh, they use no faction or mech abilities from its faction mat. So you're just using the tokens of a faction, and it doesn't matter which faction. It only matters the starting base. 
and they recommend place the opponent if you're playing like versus only one automa place it as far away from your base as you can when you're learning this game because they're very aggressive i put them like medium distance uh because i felt too far away it was like a joke it, it was like way too easy um but if you're learning scythe in general and you want to learn it solo do that because it's it gives you lots more time to build up but if you played scythe against humans which blows this out of the water uh, playing against other humans in a, in this game is, is way better than the solo mode. Uh, and you'll you'll have pushed and challenged yourself more. So this Automa might not deliver it for you at the normal difficulty. There is higher difficulties. Uh, they don't have a player mat, so that's easy. Half their components you just leave in a bag. You treat lakes as normal territories. They can cross any river after a specified point reached in the game. They also retreat combat units. So another modified rule. They retreat combat units to their faction mat, not their base. And then... Uh, it places its stars differently. So these things aren't that complicated, each one, as you look at them. But it's like, we simplified the rule set, but added like seven different ways that the rules work for them. So I'm like, I, I don't know. Uh, to me, that's like, I was like, eh. And it's saying, don't need to memorize them. We'll talk about them more in detail in the rule book. But it's like 12 pages of rules on how it modifies the base game. It's, it's, it's very weird to me. So it has additional setup. So it has its own setup. I've done this. Uh, I'll explain that shortly. Uh, but I just want to show, see if we can get to it here. I'll explain the cards, no problem. Uh, there was something else. I'll find it. Uh, let's see here. But keep in mind, all this is my opinion, and I'm not a solo gaming like expert. I've only played, I don't know, 20 games solo, maybe less. So I haven't played some other games solo, so this might be like normal. I don't know, but it just seemed like, whoa. Like I played Automa and other games, and I was like, I expect like a two-page rules maybe? But this is, this is pretty big. So the movement alone, like each version of move any unit takes like a, a half a page. So this explains like just how to move a mech when they're not attacking. But there's different a different rule set if you need to move a mech and they are attacking. So it's like, it's just weird. I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, it's kind of dark now. I don't know. But yeah, that's me. What do you guys think? I don't know. I don't know. Am I being too negative? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, to play, not necessarily to win. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, excited, just gonna copy it. Yes. So, for a solo game, it's cool, but not my preferred way to play site so far. But uh, here we go. All right. So. Uh, we're going to set up, uh, so I'm just going to do some random stuff. This part of Scythe, some, some random scoring stuff. So, uh, this is the building bonus tile, uh, based on how many tunnels I build buildings beside. I'm going to get additional gold. Gold is like the victory points of the game at the end. Uh, so I'll just throw those off to the side. Uh, let's shuffle our decks a little bit here. So I'm starting with, uh, who is it? Polania. Polania is over here. I'm starting there uh, with the white workers, white plastic and stuff. I picked them just because they pop off the mat. I maybe should have picked a different faction because the red doesn't pop off as much on the on the videos I thought they would. I should have picked like the yellow or something, but uh, it's what I pulled out of the box. So, <laughs> uh, so they're they're fairly close to my base, but not as close as obviously like being right next door. Uh, but I didn't pick like you know the to Togawa or whatever on the other side. Um, so yeah, shuffle up the encounter cards. Uh, I got to get my objectives, two of these objectives. Let's see what we pull. So objective I have to get throughout the game is, or I don't have to, but I can try, achieve total ma uh, tactical mastery, have eight or more combat cards in hand, and at least one combat victory star. Okay. I'm not a fan of the fi fighting always, but uh, let's put these here-ish so we can see them. And what do we get? Uh, send one back as a warning. Have at least seven power and complete a move action this turn that forces at least one enemy worker to retreat. So I've gotten two objectives that are very combat focused. One, I have to hold a bunch of combat cards. And if you're having combats, you're going to be spending those. So it's kind of like don't spend them, but I also have to win a combat. So it's kind of annoying, but that's part of the challenge, right? Uh, and then the other one is have seven power. So I got to build the power. And then complete a move action that forces at least one enemy worker off of a space. So just a, a worker. Uh, so I can fight with a, a combat unit in the space. But as long as a uh, worker retreats and I win, we're fine. So that's what I have for objectives. 
Uh, let's get our factory cards shuffled up here. All right, so three random. Uh, you set this up as a two-player game. So in a two-player game, uh, you only get it's players plus one for uh, factory cards. The rest will just toss off to the side there. Uh, combat cards, since I don't want to keep reaching up to the far corner, and I don't have another player on that side of the board to pass me cards, uh, we're going to put this uh, just off to the side of the board here. And here is what we're focused on today. So this is the Automa deck. Uh, how this works, so you see there is a one side and a two side. Flip it over, a one and a two. So the cards may be drawn off but with the green side facing up. That's early game. So it's when it's gentle to you, not so aggressive. And then as it moves a token along this card, so this they have a card for each difficulty level. So this is normal difficulty. We're going to move a little cube from that faction I picked along this board. Based on moving this cube, uh, you'll eventually reach this star. They get their first star over here. Uh, well, sometimes they might get a star before that, but once they hit the star that's here, uh, you will flip this deck, shuffle up what's there in the discard pile, and you'll start drawing uh, with the red side. And the red side's more aggressive usually. It generally is, I think. Uh, so, for the first beginning of the game, they start here on the one space. They're going to move across. They can't cross water if it has that little blue wavy line crossed out symbol. And these star tokens don't really mean anything. It just means they're not getting a star. But when they have a filled in star, that means they get one of their stars. Of course, the same rules apply as normal sight. The last per or the the first player or sorry, when a player places their sixth star, the game ends immediately, like dead stop. So if I place my sixth star first, we're done. If they reach to the bottom here and place this last star, or they could have stars other ways before they even get to the end here. So it may be even shorter. So you can count that there and you, you can find out how many turns are gonna be in the game of Solo Scythe. And the more aggressive you play, I don't have the other cards with me, they're upstairs, um, but there is like a hard difficulty, then like a super insane difficulty. Supposedly the play testers, there's a couple that like broke the game and were able to beat the hard difficulty. So they made like an insane difficulty that has its own special rules. Um, but I'm just playing normal here, but there is an easy mode that even skips some of these cards. Uh, there are some of these cards that have this symbol on them. That normally means they skip a turn. So you ignore the rest of the card if you're playing this on easy mode, uh, but we're not. So uh, they can get stars other ways than just on this card. So the other ways that they can get uh, stars are by hitting the power track star here. So if they go all the way up in power, hit that, that end there, they can get a star that way. That's not on the card, obviously. So they can speed it up that way. Another way is they could win two combats and get the two combat stars. Okay, that's normal for every faction, except there's one faction that can get as many stars as they want in combat. Even if you're playing with them as a AI, as an Automa, uh, they don't do any of their faction abilities. You forget all that. So no matter which color of plastic units you pull out of the box to play solo against, they are only going to be able to get two, uh, two stars from combat maximum. Okay? And one star from the power track. So there's three stars in addition to the stars that are on this card that they could get to end the game quicker. Uh, and obviously stars are worth victory points uh, at the end of the game based on your level here on this track. The Automa are always going to be at, at a popularity of 10. They don't go up, they don't go down. So they'll always be scoring at this middle track. No matter whether they scare away your workers and lose popularity and become not loved uh, in the world of Scythe, that is going to stay where it's at. I just need to put my stuff out. Oh yeah, I gotta pick my board still. Um, but let's, let's talk more about these solo cards. Uh, so the top row, you always look at the top row and it's your move action, okay? So you go along here and if you can't do one of these moves, if it's invalid, you just ignore that part, move past the slash and pick the next part. If all of these are invalid, as in they don't have the units on the board to do the moves, you just skip the move and you move down to the next part, which is called gaining stuff, okay? If they're playing a certain faction, it'll show it in brackets and they'll get that additional resource. I am playing against Rusviet, so they would get a worker and off their player mat, and they would get a second worker and a coin. But if I was playing against a different faction, they would only get the worker and the coin. Then there's another spot here uh, that is what I get for recruitment bonuses. So to simulate when you're playing multiplayer and you've uncovered on the bottom of the mat, uh, these little bonuses here that you get when they do the same action, like if they built a mech and you're a neighbor on the left or right of that player, you would get an extra coin. So if I see on the card, I see this symbol, it lets me know that the Automa is my neighbor and I get this bonus. So it kind of simulates that you'll still get stuff from other players, even though there's no players around the board, they'll randomly, you will get some of these bonuses. So it's not bad to still recruit. It's not like they nerfed it. You just play Scythe normal. You play Scythe just how you would, except you're going to have a super aggressive AI opponent 
up in your neighborhood scaring your scaring your stuff away uh, unless you're aggressive against them and that's the only real difference uh, it's like playing against a heavy combat player uh, what else on here oh yeah the next step the next step so as you work down a card so as we're doing the level one uh, side of the deck you just move down so move they gain stuff you get a recruitment bonus then you look at the center spot whether you're playing with the card this way or this way uh, you're gonna either a move their star along this track down here uh, with this symbol where the gold star is or if it's crossed out and it's gray you don't move that track so the way I said before you could count those boxes and kind of understand how many turns are in the game there are gonna be t turns where they don't move so there is a tension to it where near the end of the game you might think they're gonna grab a star because they're right next to a star but then you flip a card where they don't even move that track and you and you have another turn so I like that that part of it's fun it's similar to when you're playing with other players you don't know usually if they're gonna close out the game you're not sure they could be holding something they could move in start a fight with you they might be holding that five combat power card maybe not and then you realize they take their turn and they didn't even want to fight you they just did something else completely different the game's not over like it still has that in this automa deck and that i think is is special i like the way they did that so when you get past the the second point here and you flip up top you'll see they might do something like combat if they're adjacent to you and they have at least one combat power they will fight you with their character or a mech that's what that says there or they'll just try to do a combat in a space with a worker by themselves and just kick that worker back to your home base or they'll do try to get the factory card or an encounter chip if they can reach one or if they can't do that they might just move with their character so these are the kind of that's the kind of thought process we go through there i'll explain the cards as they come up then there's a third section of the card which uh, applies if we're in a combat where you ignore everything else on the card and just worry about this bottom uh, bar here and this is in a combat if they're currently at 0 to 7 power 8 to 13 power 14 plus power on this power track here okay they will get this many points this is like them using their dial so this is how much how, how many points they would they would submit to the combat and as you know you can only spend up to seven in, in a single combat, whether you have 14 or 15 or whatever, you can only spend a max seven on that dial. So you'll only ever see this go up to seven. But as you see here, no matter what power level he's at, he's gonna try to spend up to seven. So if, if, he, was at, if he was at three, for example, you'd look at that first spot and they'd only be able to spend three, it's up to seven. So if he was at seven, he'd spend seven. If he was at six, he'd spend six. Okay, that's how that works. And then there's a blank spot here, but they sometimes will draw uh, put a power card and it's at random. Okay, uh, there are sometimes they have two, if I can find one. Wow, there are some. There we go. Sometimes they put two power cards in there, but you don't know because you draw this off the top of the deck. So if you're going to fight them for combat, you are drawing a card, then seeing what they're going to do in combat. You have no idea other than you know what power they're at, just like in multiplayer, or you know how many cards they have, but you don't know which cards they are, and they're going to flip them at random, and they're going to do, based on this deck, they're going to do a different power count. Like, look, they could do zero power. They could do five if they're at eight to 13. You know, they, there's all differences. Look, they could only put one power in if they're eight to 13. So it's un unpredictable. It's just like a player would be. Maybe they're trying to, to fight a combat against you and not spend anything and make you waste something to then fight you somewhere else later when you're all out of resources and take you down where it really matters. And that's one of the beauties of Sight that I love. But this, this guy's just a psycho. He just wants to fight you like crazy. It doesn't matter what's going on. It's kind of funny. Um, but they may not commit to that fight as bad as you think which is which is kind of neat so they might attack you you might still win even though you may don't not put in much into the combat just because they flip like a low card but it's rare that they flip those low cards i think um so that's the automa deck and we'll go through it in more detail as we play so i'll, I'll put it there with the one facing up because we're playing with the greens to start uh, did i shuffle this i'm not sure but uh i will take three cards for myself because that's my faction starting i start on two power they start on their power of three here whatever board you grab that's what they get so i just i just grabbed the red guys first but uh they get two two combat cards uh for the ai actually let's put that can we see yeah we can see that there i'll put that there uh, i'll just keep this over here oh this is the other thing uh about the ai this is how you know it's not really a simple and intuitive AI. It, it obviously you play it over and over again, and you haven't put it on the shelf for months and try to pull it out. Uh, but it scares the crap out of me when I also saw, so not only one hour plus tutorial videos just on Solo, a 12 page rule book on Solo for Scythe, but eight reference cards 
eight reference cards. This is crazy. So like I said, this just, this makes it seem super silly. And I was like, very like, what the heck? But, uh, so just one symbol on that card, this is the stuff you have to follow. And we'll go through it as the cards come up, but it's like a little like flow chart here of like, oh, uh, let's see, let's do this and then this. But if it's, this is okay, then we do this. And there's tiebreakers, combat, the turn order, and just, just, it's the movement. The movement's the crazy part. But there is a section in the book. There is a section in the book that explains. I should have probably shown this. Here we go. Hello, Sam. All right. So designer note on the right there in the green. This I read this after reading through the rule book because sometimes I skip these designer notes and read them later. Uh, designer note. The movement system has a learning curve, and the first time you play, it will take some time. As you gain experience, the process will speed up dramatically. As you see, there is no need to go over every possible territory. You'll learn to spot which territories are relevant for consideration. Example, for the move worker action, you'll focus on only the areas where the automa already has as many units. And for move uh, mech slash character, you'll focus only on the territories close to human players' combat units. In most cases, you'll be able to visually identify one to four territories that could be relevant while all others can be ignored. So obviously they knew in play testing this 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 had an issue. This had an issue. Okay, so they realized like maybe it's too complex for this. But it's probably the only way you can really do Scythe solo. So it's it's neat that they did a solo mode for it. But again, I, I still would rather play this multiplayer with people at this point. I have other games I'd rather play solo, I think. So far. <laughs> That's my impression right now. But we're going through the third playthrough, so so we'll see. Okay. So I'll leave these reference cards over here, but uh, the one I want to show you, so on the Automa turn, so we always go first, but on their turn, you just draw an Automa card. If you're playing easy mode, skip it based on that symbol I showed you. They perform a move, they gain their stuff, you gain a recruit bonus maybe, and then you update the star marker. That's it. That's all they do on their turn. That's it. Super easy. And then you're like, wait, I just need to move something. Now I got to look through my book of, of reference cards here. It's just funny. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, all right. <clears throat> let's see here let's see okay uh so we got to pick a player mat super important uh so i was just testing lighting but we will so i don't think polania has um there's two factions that have a ratted combinations that they recommend not to play together uh not my game but we'll keep listening rob streams are <laughs> oh no hey dragon how are you thanks for joining the stream <laughs> Oh, you guys are crazy. All right. Uh... <laughs> and I'll stop ranting about the rules, but that's just my impressions. I wanted to give that. I was like, uh, man. And then I, I saw all the tutorials have like tons of views and I see why. Because, <laughs> yes, that was creepy. Uh, okay, that's almost creepy. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we shuffled up. Uh, somebody want to give me a number from one to seven. Uh, first person to drop a one to seven in the chat, just pick a number. I'll pick that one. I don't have a, a seven sided die to roll. So we should do a whole game of something in that whisper. <laughs> Mel's quick enough with a three. Matt puts a 20 you, or a two O oh, and he fails. All right. We're going with three. Mel's quickest. So I'll just go from left to right. One to two, three. This is the, uh, Matt we're going to pick. <laughs> Matt's just slamming numbers on his keyboard. It's like, ah, oh, trying to be fast. <laughs> Brian says he'll update it. He'll up his Patreon if Rob does a whole game in that voice. I don't know if that'd be bad. I, I probably wouldn't be able to do a stream for a couple days. I feel like that would like make my throat sore if I was trying to do that too much. But uh, it'd probably be funny to do during like a Halloween theme, kind of like a horror theme game or something. If I like dim the lights, had some candle light, and it was just like the whole time. I think I need to draw three cards. All right. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, it'd be creepy. It would have like a bunch of views for like the first minute and then everyone just like turns the video off. Uh, all right. So we're playing with, what's this? Industrial. Yeah. So like I was saying, I don't think Polania has a faction that they're not allowed to play with. Uh, does anyone know? I should just check. I know it's Rusty. It has like one they don't play with, but then there was another faction added. Let me check the FAQ. Rob's Batman impression. I'm Batman. All right. Uh, let's see here. Arata. Ah, there it is. So. 
So right here, banned. they're banned. Don't ever play with these combinations in your house where Jamie Stegmaier will find you and you'll be punished. So these are banned. Rust Viet and Industrial, they're supposedly broken and not balanced. And don't play with Crimea and Patriotic. But it does say with new players, who gives a crap? No one's going to realize that. But if you're playing with players who know what they're doing, and I'm not sure I do, but uh, don't pin these together because they just have like an advantage over everyone else at the table. That's my tip for you today. Rust Viet and Crimea. Ah, Janet, thank you. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm Polania. And these guys are just red red pieces. They're not even Rust Viet. They're just red pieces. We don't worry about any of that, any of that stuff for them. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I need to put some pla or some wood in my two-layer cardboard board. I love these. One of my favorite things about Scythe is just just the the, the dual-layer cardboard mats. When I played that, I was like, "Why does everyone else not do this?" I love it. And we'll play a little game of fitting everything in its space and trying to fit all these workers in here without knocking them over. And what these are, for those who don't know Scythe, uh, the cool part about this game, like other games have done, uh, this game was inspired by, there's a couple games, Terra Mystica and one other game. Jamie Stegmaier said he kind of like in, was inspired by these two other games and kind of got the ideas from. Um, oh, I forget what the other one was. But uh, I like this idea of covering up, um, covering up things on the board to make things cost not as good. I'm not, I know I'm not explaining it correctly. But... Uh, Things don't cost as good and you're not getting as efficient of actions. But if you can move some of these cubes off and move them to the bottom or take some of these tokens off here off the board, it makes moves better and can make you more efficient and get your engine going, uh, which is neat. Uh, where's one more in here, uh, which I love. I love this game. Love, love, love this game. Okay. They do. Those combos are broken. Hmm. <laughs> Bernardo's here. Greeting from the bottom of the barrel. Please don't shoot. <laughs> and Wild Inferno's here. Hello. Just got the Rise of Fenders expansion. Can't wait to try it in the next year or two. Yeah. Try it. Rise of Fenders. Like, yeah, Wild. It, it, with a bunch of players, if you can. I held on to that game for, like, over a year, that expansion, until I had the players together that we could play it over, like, a month or two. I didn't want to leave it too long. We were taking, like, two or three month breaks between plays. So I just held it on the shelf, even though it was killing me. It was killing me not to have played that and have the box sitting on my shelf for like one of my favorite games. Hearing it's one of the best expansions ever designed for a game, period. Uh, I was like very upset. And then now I've played it, I understand why. It's amazing. But obviously you have to like Scythe to want that expansion or to like that expansion. Don't just buy the game because of the expansion. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh Marcus, I'm with you, man. He misses gaming in person. Solo games are great, but there's just nothing like a real opponent. I agree. I was the same way with video games uh, as a kid. I loved playing video games in my room growing up. But then once I realized there's like two-player games, like sports games, fighting games, shooting games, whatever. As soon as I realized I could play with my friends, that I like, I was addicted to it. I just love trying to outsmart or outmatch a human opponent. And then when online gaming kicked off, like I buy most games if they have an online component in video games, I don't even play the solo mode. I don't want to play against your crappy AI opponents. I want to like, you know, nothing like playing against a human, like having a human brain try to try to outsmart you. I love it. Um, but these guys do an okay job of coming up with AI stuff, I think, but considering, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days, we can do a virtual game, all of us with our own copy, and move the pieces for all. <laughs> I see people do that where one person has the game, and then everyone else just kind of directs the person to do their moves for them. It's just hard with, like, cards and stuff, right? You have to have, like, you're, there's there's hidden components in this game. So Mel doesn't count as an opponent. <laughs> Get out of here. I wasn't saying that. I'm just saying solo versus multiplayer in general. But yes, like I said, I would rather play this game two-player with Mel over playing the AI. Any day of the week. Any day of the week. Unless she was busy working and I wanted to play in the daytime, here I am. <laughs> oh, Scobber's trying to start trouble. All right. So let's shuffle this up. I already, I already get myself in enough hot, hot water. I don't need your help. <laughs> 
I'm in trouble. All right. Okay. Uh, I think I have everything set up. Uh, oh, no, I don't. I got my objective cards. Uh, popularity, I'm starting on two. Uh, and gold, I need four. Okay, I'm going to keep my gold on my mat here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Mm, let me see if I can shove myself over a little bit. I could. Oh, yeah. There, you guys can see my board. All right. Actually, I have room. There we go. There we go. We're good. All right. Ah, Marcus, you're spoiling my final thoughts at the end of the video. <laughs> That's where I'm going to get to. We'll talk about the digital version of Scythe when we get to the end. All right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, let's see. So I get to go first. I think I've done everything for setup. Again, I'm going by memory. Um, but yeah, it should be okay. Uh, oh, let's just check the setup for the Automa. Make sure I have all that done for sure. Uh, I got their faction mat. They got their power and combat cards. Yep. Um, they got five coins. Yeah, I gave them five coins. So they start off at five points already. Uh, place their token on the 10th space, their popularity token. Two workers on the board uh, near their home base. Done. Place mech, stars, and the remaining workers on their faction mat. So remaining workers down here. Again, they don't have a player board. They don't have a player mat. None of that business. Uh, so they just have this one board. So we put their workers here, the stars here, their mechs here. Okay. And if they lose in a combat, they're with their mechs or their character, they go back to the mat. Uh, and we pick the automa card and we shuffle the deck. All right, so I think we're good. I think we got everything set up, but I apologize if I missed something. I'm sure we'll figure it out as we play. Okay, my turn first. What are we going to do? Let me let me take a look at my board here and see what's what's crap and what's good to build. Uh, so it looks like feeding my uh, recruits uh, costs four food. That's kind of rough, but I do start with food and or lumber here uh, in my starting area near my home base. So buildings, uh, lumber, it's only three right now. I can get it down to two, but look at building a mech uh, cost me three, but I could get it down to one for metal. Uh, and upgrades, that's moving the cubes from the top bottom to make an action better to reducing the cost on a bottom row action uh, only cost me three oil. So nothing here is that cheap, but I get lots of gold if I keep doing upgrades and building mechs and building buildings are good. But if I if I do the enlisting, this board's kind of telling me not to enlist too much, Rob, because it costs four food and you don't get any gold out of doing it. But the AI could give me bonuses from doing that. And it's only four things you need to do to get a star. You just have to cover up these four icons here by moving these recruit uh, tokens over. So that might be a good way to go. And too bad, no oil or iron. Exactly. So what I was trying to get to, as Wild's pointing out, uh, I kind of got a little bit screwed on my board set up here, but this this is fun. Uh, oh, I have a faction ability I want to cover. Uh, I can pick up to two options on the encounter cards. Uh, I just realized that. So we'll deal with that when I draw uh, the encounter cards, which are me going to these spots with these tokens and picking them up with my character only. Okay. So, let's see what's here. So, move is tied with buildings. I like to move. Move is good. I like to trade to get resources, but again, the bottom row action is kind of trash. Producing. I need to get to the metal or the oil up here, I think. But I need to get river walk to get across there or build a mine. Hmm. What do we do here? I like to get that encounter as fast as possible since I get two options off it. Could give me the resources that could lead my strategy. So I should probably lean into that. So I think I'm going to start by moving. And what I'm going to do is move two different units. So it's two separate move boxes here. So I can pick two different units and move them. I'm going to move my character as one. And then I'm going to move uh, this worker over here. Okay, He's going to go in the village and hopefully start making babies. And we can get some more workers on the board here. Industrial bears. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that's my turn. I put my little peg here and that signifies, signifies that I've used this action. So this, this board is divided into four actions. I can only pick one 
and I could do the top and or bottom, but I have to do them in that order. And I put a token here to say that I can't do that action again next turn. So I have to pick a different space. So if they put a token here, a little pawn, so that you're not doing the same action over and over again. There is a faction that does break that rule, but I'm not playing that faction. And it is this faction, these dirty guys. All right, so anyways, uh, now it's on to the Automa. So let's start the process by drawing a card from the deck of fun. Okay, let's see what they're going to do first. This one's kind of simple. Uh, so they're going to move a worker, okay? So let's uh, see what move a worker means. Okay, so here's the symbol. I go to the, my re reference cards. I find that symbol. So let's deal with the movement. So first, I'm going to select an Automa worker closest to the Automa's home base. Okay, and that could include on the home base. Target is reading order. It's English reading order, left to right, top to bottom, okay? Uh, then I'm going to choose a valid hex, okay? And in the neighborhood of any Automa unit, so neighborhood is a term that they teach you in the solo rules. It's basically anything near a unit that they can move to within one hex. That is the neighborhood, including the space they're on. So you're checking each neighborhood of every single unit and kind of finding the one that fits all these rules. So the valid hexes have to be in the neighborhood of any Automa unit, so any of their units, or in the neighborhood of their home base. There has to be no enemy unit there and no other Automa worker. So another overall rule that kind of makes it simpler to understand, these little wooden workers, they can never be in the same space as another one. So if they are, I've done something wrong, yell at me in the chat, I've messed up. Only one little wooden guy in each space max for the Automa. Same goes for the plastic units. A character can never be in the space with another mech. So these mechs can't be in the space with another mech or can't be in the space with a character. If I've done that, I've messed something up, please yell at me, okay? Uh, so that's usually the check here is no Automa worker other than the one selected. So a place where that guy is, if I pick this guy, his neighborhood includes his space and you can that does count as a valid space. And then I check all the other hexes around him as his neighborhood. But again, they can't move across water right now. So all these three hexes that are above this, this, this river or whatever, he can't cross, yeah, rivers. Yeah, he can't cross rivers yet. <laughs> uh, so then we would pick up the selected worker and then we choose a destination hex which needs to be a valid hex which the valid hexes have to follow these and then it has to be in the neighborhood of the most Automa units and then not in the neighborhood of any enemy combat units tiebreakers if there's a bunch of spaces that fit all of this criteria uh, is closest to the factory and then reading order then you place the worker down so I'm going to go through it right now and I may mess it up a few times during this playthrough and I'm almost at the point where I play through this game where at some points, I just don't care. Don't let this frustrate you. Don't let this, this solo mode being so strict and structured. I would think if you're just going to play solo, don't let this rule book scare you. Don't let these reference cards scare you. Just try to understand this. You can follow the card. But I'm to the point now where I kind of look at the board. If I wasn't playing on camera, I would just look and be like, it's either this spot or this spot. I think I know which one it is. I'm just going to slap it down and move on. I don't want to sit here for 15 minutes every time I'm trying to figure out one unit of movement for the Automa. But it, it takes practice. It takes practice to, to figure it out. But if I put it in one space over another and I'm wrong, it's not a big deal. I mean, yes, it may break the game and if you're super competitive. But uh, yeah. All right. So I'm looking for a worker closest to the Automa base. Well, these guys are both equal distance to the Automa base here, okay? So I, then I tie break reading order. So left to right, top to bottom makes this guy the tiebreaker on selecting the unit. Okay, so it's this worker right here. Okay, now I'm looking at valid hexes in the neighborhood of any Automa unit. So the neighborhood of any unit is right here where this guy is. That's his own neighborhood or it's the neighborhood of this guy. There's a space here. But remember, they can't cross uh, rivers yet. So we don't look at any other spaces. So it's one of these three hex are all in the neighborhood of each other. Then in the neighborhood of the Automa base, if there wasn't one there, so these are that's valid. There's no enemy units there. There's no Automa worker in this space. So it can't be this space because there's a worker there. It's it, Or it could be this space actually because it says no Automa worker other than the one selected. So really these two spaces now are still in the running as valid hexes. Okay. Then it says pick up the selected worker. Okay. Now I look for a valid hex. We know these two hexes are valid. We've already determined that. Now in the neighborhood of the most Automa units, okay? So that would be, we don't count the units that are on the home base, they don't count. You can have a neighborhood to the base, but not to the units in the base. So there's only one unit on the board right now, 
And these are both in his neighborhood, okay? There's one neighbor to this space, one neighbor to this space. Then I check, not in the neighborhood of enemy combat units. No enemy combat units nearby. Tiebreaker is closest to the factory, then reading order. But if I check this space, I'm one, two, three away from the factory. This space is one, two away from the factory. So it's this space. That breaks it. I don't need to do the reading order. We know that this worker moves here. And then you place the worker down. So those are the five steps you have to go through every time to just move a single worker. And these rules are different depending on the type of unit. So yeah, that's the first one. <laughs> Craziness. All right. So I moved the worker. We got there. All right. Now they're going to get stuff is the second row. So three power. One, two, three. They're up to six power. Oh, no. And then no recruitment bonus. It doesn't matter. I don't have anything recruited. Then we're going to move the star token on their little board here. Still can't move across rivers. Boom. First card down. We did it. All right. Any questions? Tiny, you don't own... Oh, my God. Okay. Animation Raptor and Spencer... Uh, I need to talk with you guys after. I'm not impressed that both you have never played Scythe. That blows my mind. Blows my mind. But you're buying everything that comes on Kickstarter without even knowing if it's any good. But you're not playing Scythe. I, this is an 11th highest board game ranked on Board Game Geek of all time. So good. <laughs> oh, Sam saying the Automa is, puts up a good challenge. We'll, we'll see about that. Hide your wallet. Yeah, Janet knows. Janet knows. Everyone in the chat, attack Animation Raptor for not ever playing Scythe. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> How dare you? Ban him, ban him. Get him, boys. <laughs> and girls. <laughs> but yeah, Scythe is awesome. Amazing game. Pure quality, well designed. So good. I've never been bored of playing Scythe. I've never not wanted to play Scythe. Multiplayer. Again, I'm just learning the solo. I, I, if you're only going to play this game solo, uh, yeah, I wouldn't buy it for that unless you really, really like it. But Oh, John, you got the original Kickstarter? Lucky guy. Shame. Yes. Big Dirty Phil. Shame. 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 Start dinging the bell. All right. <laughs> oh. Rob, one time you could maybe do a list of games that fired other games. I probably could at this point, but I've only been in the hobby since like 2012. So only like eight years. So it's tough. Like I'm still finding about games that were in the hobby before I joined the hobby that I'm just trying out now and getting into. And I've only been like really heavy in the hobby for like, the you know, like five-ish years of, no, let me last six years or so. Um, but before that was just kind of like, oh, this is cool. Just dabbling a little bit. And then I was like, all right, I'm in, I'm in. And now I'm here on YouTube playing with you guys. Yes. Yeah. Scythe is like full. So while saying Scythe is weird to describe, it is. And that's what makes it so unique. I don't know if there's other games that are as good as Scythe. If you look up other games, there's not many. Not many have dethroned this guy as a game like this. It's a Euro-ish game with combat mechanics. You're managing resources. You're there. You don't have to fight. You don't have to do combat, but it is a thing in the game and it's something you have to be aware of. And it's just the tension of fighting could be there. Or you can go all out and start fighting people. It's your choice. But you're trying to complete objectives. There's random encounter stuff. There's point scoring at the end. Um, I just love how there's always the tension of the game could end before you're done building your engine and getting all your points going. There's some area control. There's some hidden player, player uh, cards and stuff. There's also uh, asynchronous player powers or whatever. Not asynchronous, I guess. Variable player powers, I guess you'd say. That's the term I'm looking for. Uh, that each faction has. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's weird to explain. And all your all your resources stay on the board and people can steal them from you. I, I love that about it too. So you, can't, you don't just hide them behind a board or keep them on your own mat. Other than your gold, you're actually putting all your resources on the board and people can use combat to come and steal them from you, which I think is awesome. Okay, so that was the Automa. Our turn. Let's get her done. All right, uh, we can't move. Uh, produce maybe uh, yeah let's just produce I guess so we'll get a worker because of the village for producing and the other packs will produce that as a wood right here 
I don't know if that was a good way to go, but that's what we're doing. All right. A little slow start, of course, as the game. That's part of the fun. It's like it's very slow. You want to do more, but you can't. Okay, so for this this one, uh, their character is going to try to grab an encounter token or a factory card. Primarily a factory card. If it can't, you're just going to move the character in a non-combat fashion. So, uh, let's, let's read it out here. I, I know where he's going, I'm pretty sure, but you select the Automa character. It's on the board. That's valid, so we can do it because the character is on the board. Uh, valid hexes in the neighborhood of any Atama unit. Okay, these are the only hexes here. They're all in the neighborhood. Uh, the factory. It can't reach the factory yet because it can't cross lakes yet according to its little card here. Uh, and a hex with encounter token. Well, there's a spot with a counter token that it can reach. Okay. Now you need to pick up the character and choose a destination hex. Has to be valid. No enemy unit. No autumn mech. Closest to the factory and reading order of the tiebreaker. So the only one plays with encounter tokens right there. And there's no other combat unit. So it's just going to take this encounter token and get rid of it off the board. That's what they do. They just steal the encounter tokens. They're gone. Okay. Just simulates a player taking them. We don't have to go through an encounter card. Uh, and that's that. And then they're going to get stuff. They're going to get a worker and a combat card. So you just take a worker off the board and you put it on their home base. Okay. Now they have a new worker out there. That will be the first to move because it's closest to the home base. The next time they have to move a worker. Uh, and then a combat card. Okay. Let's give them another combat card. And if I had the recruit bonus for combat cards, I would get one. And then we're going to move their star token. Or along that little 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 scoring track. Okay. Um, all right. So my turn. I'm going to move. And the whole idea, yes, I was saying I wanted to get to this encounter token. Because I have the faction that can look at two on there. So it might give me some resources to help direct one of my moves. I Again, I haven't played Scythe in a while. I played the solo just to learn it the other day. But, uh, yeah, don't watch this to see, like, pro-level scythe play by any means. This is just a playthrough of the solo mode to show how it kind of works. Or show how it works. Like, it's not kind of. Okay. And, and I like to have a little fun on the stream, too. So this is definitely not trying to, like, score the most points or anything. Please, 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 please understand that. Okay. All right. Uh, next is... What did I say I was going to move? I could trade first. Patterson the Ong, thank you for subscribing. All right. Uh, I could trade just to get some wood so that when I go to move, I will have wood to then build uh, the mine to help get me out of here to get some metal and oil, hopefully. So I think that's what I'm going to do is trade. Uh, spend a coin. Get two wood. I'll just throw that, I don't know, on this space with the wood. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, uh, I can't do the bottom row action onto the Automa. Uh, so this would say skip the turn if you're playing on easy mode. We're not. If they were that faction, we would need to do some fighting. They're not. Uh, then they're going to try to move a worker. Okay, so a worker closest to the home base. Uh, neighborhood of most Automa units is here. You can't go on these other two spaces because they have workers in them. So it's obviously going to be this space. That's that. And they can't move over the the, late, uh, the rivers yet. They're going to get another worker. Throw that on the home base. Okay. And then they're going to get a coin. And then I would gain a popularity. Uh, but they're going to move again. They're pushing here. They're going to move that track along. So one more push here. And they'll be able to cross rivers already. And I'm in trouble. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's do some movement, I think. Yep. We're going to move. So we're going to do the character in here. Uh, then we're going to move one of these workers. I feel like we'll just move them here. I don't know. Sure. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to spend three uh, wood to do the bottom action here. I get a gold for that action. Uh, I then can build a building. I'm going to build the mine, and I need to build it near tunnels. So I might as well just build it right here. It has to be where I have a worker. So I'm going to build my mine here. So it's adjacent to two of these, which will help me in endgame scoring. Uh, I think that's what that means. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, sorry. At the end of my movement, I need to do my encounter. Uh, sorry, let's rewind. I should not have... Uh, I should not have... I forgot about the encounter token on the board. 
So sorry if you guys are yelling at me in chat. Uh, so I'll do the encounter first before I commit to do this build at the bottom. All right. Yeah. So as soon as movement's done, not as soon as the turn's over. In my head, I was thinking that. But all right. So here we go. Uh, encounter card number 24. I do have the expansion encounter cards in here. The ones that you can buy a little box of to double the size of this. Uh, so I have a bunch of expansion stuff in here. But uh, other than that, no other expansion stuff, I think, in play. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. Conceive a plan with the patrolling troops in the forest. So I can pick two options because of faction I'm playing. So I could gain a combat card and gain one popularity. Well, that would help with the uh, one of my objectives. Uh, relieve the soldiers of some dead weight. I could pay two gold, gain any three resources. Or I could deceive the soldiers and steal their mech. Pay three popularity to deploy a mech. I think I'm going to do the top two. I'm going to do the top two. So I gain a combat card. Oh, I didn't even look at what my combat cards are. Uh, let's see what power's there. Oh, I have a five. Nice. So I have a five, a three, and two twos. Right, maybe I should put it like this. So let's just put these over. I don't know if you guys can see. Actually. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, and gain a popularity. Done. And then I could pay two gold, which I'll do. And gain any three resources. Uh, those three resources are going to be metal. I think. Yes, let's do metal. Uh, and that will go where my character is. So it's where you do the encounter is where that stuff has to go. Okay, so this will just throw on the bottom of the deck because of my discard. All right, uh, let's see here. Now I'll do the bottom row action, yes. So spending the wood, building the mine, same thing. I'll put it on the same spot. And I got, oh, I got the coin for that. Yeah, sorry, that extra coin was from there. I didn't roll that back. So I don't get an extra coin. We're done. Okay, Automa. Uh, so combat, no. Combat where there's a worker, no. Moving a worker. So the closest to the home base is this guy, but he has no valid spot. So no, nothing's going to happen here uh, movement-wise. Like you could say uh, it's this guy because of reading order, but then that's the only spot valid that he can go. So nobody moves, no worker moves. Uh, but they're still going to get the coins. So two coins and the recruit bonus doesn't matter. But they're not moving their track. So they're still not able to cross lakes. Back to me. So, uh, I guess we'll produce, uh, and I'm going to produce, oh, I could only do two hexes. Maybe I shouldn't have moved that guy before. Uh, okay, so I will, I'll produce another worker and I'll produce a wood. And then the bottom row action, I can spend three metal and I get two gold and we'll deploy a mech. Uh, let's do our speed mech that helps plastic units move one extra space. Uh, let's put it on, this space, I guess. And that's it. All right. Okay. So I am going to look at the top here and the character wants to grab another encounter token or factory card, but can't. And then they want to move. Uh, but they're already closest to, to uh, enemy combat units, so I don't think it needs to move. Then they're going to go up three power. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, I should go over that, actually. So what I'm, I'm looking at here, so they can't get an encounter token or a factory card yet. So then I look at the second option here, which is non-attacking move by a character. So you select the character in the neighborhood of any Atama unit, in the neighborhood of the base, no enemy unit, no Automa mech. Pick up the character, choose Destination X. And shortest distance from enemy unit, tiebreaker closest to the factory, then reading order. So I literally pick it up, and that's the valid spot, is that's closest, I, I believe. And that's it. 
But it, it, yeah, that, that's it. Okay. Uh, I gave them the power, I think. Did I give them the coin? No, I did not. And they're not moving their, their token. Okay. So uh, now, uh, what do I want to do? And I'm going to forget what I want to do on my turns. That will just happen. It happens a lot in multiplayer games as I'm helping other players around the table and it gets back around to me. I forget what I was doing. Uh, but I'm going to do that just by trying to explain these cards and figure them out. Uh, it'll kind of get me in a different thought process. And then I come back to my turn and I got to, uh, what was I doing? Um, but yeah, I need to get seven power and force an enemy worker to retreat or eight combat cards and have at least one combat victory star. So I got to work towards that. Uh, what else are we going to work towards? I can move. Let's get some guys, I think, out of my base here. But I think before that, I'm going to get some... Hmm, should I get some more wood? Yeah, I'm going to do a trade action. I'm going to pay one. And I'm going to get two wood. So right there. Okay, that's my turn done. Over to the Automa. Uh, so they want to move a mech. There's no mech. That's not valid. They want to move their character. We already went through all this. They're not going to do anything. Uh, now, because they're rusty it though, they're going to gain two workers total and a coin. So we're going to put two more workers on their home base, and they get a coin. Uh, and then they're going to move their track. They're going to move the track. So now they're officially able to move across rivers going forward. So I got to remember that. Now, now things are going to get fun. All right. Uh, my turn. I think it's move time. Yes, because we got the wood to prepare for that move. Okay. So we're moving. I could do two units. And plastic units can move two spaces. I feel like I want to get upgrades going. Just so I can reduce the cost of some of these things here. But we'll see. All right, so this mech is going to go through the tunnel. He's going to go over here. And that's one move, two move. And he's going to bring these two little workers with him up to this tundra space. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my character is going to go through the tunnel uh, and come out this mine, I guess, and move to here. And that will be that movement. I believe I did all that correct. Uh, so I end my turn on a counter, or not end my turn, but end my movement. We'll do another encounter token. Uh, let me move these over here. Okay, let's see what we got. Card number 22. Offers some advice to fix a broken pulley at a defunct mine. Gain two gold in the popularity. Uh, the next one, haggles for some cheap ore from the mine's owner. Pay two and gain four metal. Ooh. Or cut the pulley loose without hesitation. Pay two popularity, build a structure. Man, I'm not paying popularity. Get out of here. So let's do the first two. Uh, so we're going to gain two. And one popularity. Gain two gold, sorry. Or two money. Uh, then we're going to pay two money. Whoa, look how that works. So we'll pay that money back. And then we'll gain four metal. So my bet of not stopping a guy on the metal spot uh, just kind of paid off a little bit there. Uh, and this is an encounter card. So it has to go down here where that encounter happened. Not where there's a worker or anything like that. Okay. Done. Okay. Uh, bottom row action. Let's build some buildings with the wood we have. All right. Uh, we get a gold. And we're going to build. I feel like the mill. I feel like the mill. Let's get some more resources pumping. Uh, what do we want, though? Food. We could put it on the spot with food to get more food going. We put it on the spot with wood. To get more wood going. I only have two more buildings to build though. But I mean. Mm, or I could put it on the spot with the oil. And we can just start pumping oil out. I feel like it's the oil. I feel like it's the oil. Wood or oil says Marcus. Yeah. I feel like wood to keep pushing the buildings. But then I might regret it. That it's stuck there. The food is the worst one, so that it could be an argument for food if I ever want to just try to get these four recruits off quicker. That would probably be the best to cover my bases on the more expensive food. But the oil could reduce food down to two if I start pumping oil. So I'm going to do the oil. I'm going to do the oil. Hopefully the automa doesn't go in that territory if I leave it later. 
Upgrades gives you three coins. Yes, that's true. Janet, 100%. Yeah, I was talking about that at the start. I should really focus on the upgrades. I forgot all about that. Yeah. So oil, that kind of answers it too. Is if I want to try to get money generally, I may not go for the star in upgrades though, but I like to get at least two to three upgrades every time I play Scythe to help reduce the cost of things that I am trying to get stars for. So you don't necessarily have to go for all six stars. I would if I had a faction that had oil in my home base and I was already pumping it. But in this case, I had to go outside my home base to get it. So I'm already a few turns behind. But it, we'll see how it works with the Automa. That's the other thing. As human players, you might have all day. But the Automa, they're kind of on like a fixed schedule. They're going to just, you know, end the game at a certain point. So some strategies you might do in multiplayer might not be as good in, in the Automa playthrough in solo. Uh, unless you've messed with the rules or you're playing on a, like easy difficulty maybe. But we'll see here. Again, I'm not experienced in the solo. But based on my two plays, that's just kind of something I noticed a little bit. Uh, did I do everything? I think so. Got my coin. Okay, Automa. All right. So they want to just try to do some combat where I have a worker. Not going to happen. They're not close enough. Then they want to move a worker. Let's move worker. Closest to the home base. Now we need to find a neighboring place that's beside the most Automa units. So this is neighboring three of their units. Three guys here. This is neighboring only two. Neighboring two, neighboring three, neighboring one, neighboring one. Okay. So it's one of the ones with threes, but then the tiebreakers like factory, then left to right reading order, top to bottom. So where did I say this was? This one's a three, right? That's one, two from the factory. This spot that had three is one, two, three from the factory. So it is here, I believe. And again, if I'm wrong, please correct me in, in, the, in the chat. We'll have a discussion because like I said, I'm not a pro at this whole movement thing yet. I don't know if I ever will be or ever care to be, but the, I'm going to try to figure it out as best I can and try to do it without looking at the cards every single time. Uh, I'm trying to like get it to stick. Uh, but if you have questions, feel free to ask. We'll look at the card and figure it out because I'm here trying to learn this and figure it out with you guys. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Automa can go in lakes. They don't care. I forgot to say that earlier. They don't give a crap about what is on a hex. They will go wherever they want. Anywhere. Uh, that's in here somewhere. I thought I read that. Maybe I didn't. Yes, I did read it at the start. Treat lakes as normal territory hexes and can cross rivers after a specific point in the game. Yes. They don't care about the lakes. Uh, then they gain another worker. I don't think I've done that yet. So we put the third one on there. I don't get anything. Then we're going to move this uh, little thing along their track. Okay. Cheat yes, Automa cheats. They're filthy, dirty cheaters. They have their own rule set. They have their own rule set. They do what they want. They teleport all around the board. They do what they want. <laughs> uh, okay. Make sure not to forget your objectives. Janet, I forget my objectives every game I play Scythe until later in the game. I'll look at them and go, oh yeah, crap. And then if I remember them and I'm trying to get them done and then I get them done, I forget to redeem them all the time. I skip turns. Happens all the time. Every single time I play the game. Because usually these are face down too. They're up. I should be able to look at them all the time. But when they're just sitting face down beside my board, I forget they're even in the game and it's a thing you can do. Usually another player at the table will do it. And then I go, oh yeah, crap, I have objectives. Always forget. Even if I play Scythe like two or three days in a row, I would still forget in that third day. I just would not, not remember them. I'm just bad like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Power cards, yeah. So it's because there's no combat really happening yet, but but that's I could try to work towards getting a combat star, but I mean, I feel like the Automa will come to me and let me do that anyway. All right. So what do we have on the board here? I got metal. Uh, I want to get some oil going. So I could produce. Could produce, get another mech going. Yep, I think that's what I do. All right, I'm going to produce. Uh, I get to pick two hexes and one where the mill is. Uh, I do have to pay a power to do this, though. So I play a power. Uh, I will obviously produce on these two and the place where there's the oil. Uh, so we get three oil, one from the, the, uh, the mill and two from the workers there. So three oil on this space. Produce plus mech or move to get a factory. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I need to get a factory card, too. That's another reason I got my character there 
but uh, uh, so sorry. I get a wood and a food. Done with the produce. Bottom row action. We are going to use three metal. We're going to gain two coins. I actually can trade some of these in. Okay, and we'll build a mech. Mm. Can move to and from lakes. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Or river walk gets me into villages. Yeah, let's do the lake one. Move to and from lakes and move from any lake to another lake uh, with my plastic units. I think that's pretty good. Combat one. In combat, do not lose popular and forcing opponents' workers to retreat. Well, that's pretty good with my objective. <laughs> uh, I should probably get that one next. Okay. Um, I want to put this guy where I can move workers around. I think I'll just put this guy here. Yeah, sure. I don't know if that's the best spot, but that's where I'm going. All right. Uh, Automa. So they're going to skip this first part in brackets because they are not playing that faction. Only cool kids play that faction. That's me. Uh, then next. Uh, just kidding. All right. Then we're moving a mech. There's no mech on the board. That's invalid. Oh, yeah, they haven't got any mechs yet. Oh, they're about to get one. Uh, then we're going to move worker. So we'll take one of these ones from the home base. Uh, now we're going to do that whole neighborhood check thing. So right here, three in the neighborhood of. There's three here. And a bunch, uh, two here. So it's one of these two. Close to the factory, though, I believe is right here. So that's where that worker is going to go. Uh, then they get another worker. Their final worker is now in their home base. Uh, then they're going to bring a mech on the board into their home base. They would bring their character, but their character's still on the board. Remember, the character could go back to their board after losing a combat. And I'll make sure that happens. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Then they're going to move uh, one along the Star Trek. Okay. Star Trek. Not Star Trek. Just for those who are making notes and trying to figure out the game. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Uh, cheesy jokes. All right. And then movement. Yeah, let's get a factory card going. Oh, I didn't leave room for a factory card. That's what I didn't do. Uh, let's do this. All right. Just making room for a factory card here. Forgot about that when laying everything out. Because you know I need my factory card. Okay. Uh, so what are we doing? We're doing move? I have wood? I don't have wood to build yet. I could do another trade. So that I can build my next building. I think I'm going to do that. Let's just trade. Although, I could find a factory card that's like really good and helps me with that. But then by then I wouldn't care about the buildings because I'm already... Yeah, no. Okay. So we'll just do a trade. And we'll just get two wood. I know it's weird. Buy, I keep buying wood off the black market instead of just building it myself. Uh, do they get a star? Why would they get a star? Oh! No, Marcus, no, no. Uh, they don't get a star for their last worker. I thought I explained that. Sorry, Marcus, I'm sorry. Uh, they only get stars by hitting the spots on this track that have stars. Or, or, there's only two other ways. By hitting on the power track here for a star. Or by winning two combats. So there's only three stars they can pull, not on this card. Combat one, combat two, power track. That is it. Everything else is going to come off their board star-wise when they hit certain points on this little uh, turn track counter thing that the Automa has. So yeah, nothing when they get all the workers out. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, no worries, no worries, Marcus, no worries. I'll explain it. Yeah, ask the questions. It's all good. It's ask the questions, ask the questions. Because I may, I may have forgotten it or you weren't here for it. That's totally cool too. Uh, but yeah, feel free, anybody, ask questions if you're not sure why I'm doing things the way I'm doing it. Uh, like I said, I'm not a pro at this, but I'll explain why I'm doing it if I forgot to. Uh, or if I didn't. It's all good. Uh, fun of doing it live. Uh, all right. So uh, two wood, I said, right? Yeah, two wood from the trade action. I believe I spent my money. And I can't do the bottom row action, unfortunately. I'm choosing to ignore that right now. But maybe that's something I get going. Anyways, all right, Automa. All right. They don't want to fight because they're not that faction. 
Uh, the character is going to try to grab a factory card. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Their character is going to go to the factory. Boo! And then they take a random factory card, and it leaves the game. Okay, now there's only two left for me to get. I should have went there already because I forgot how aggressive they get taking the factory. So I'm probably going to have to do a combat to get in there, and I'm not exactly in the spot to do that. I made a mistake. I really should have rushed in there for a power card. My bad. With that board, I would have planned to shun the trade action. Yeah, I should. I should have shunned the trade action. I agree. Okay. Uh, and then we get a coin for them. Uh, let's get some of these out of here. Let's cash them up. Easier for scoring later. And then they're going to move along the track. And that is that. Okay, so now we're going to the move action. Uh, should we though? No, let's do the bolster. I'm gonna pay one. I'm gonna go up two on the power track. I'm gonna spend three oil. And we're gonna do the upgrade. So I'm gonna get three coins. And uh, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Could make producing better. I like the movement. I like to have more units that can move. So I'm gonna take it off the move on the top. And then I'm going to make... Let's make producing faster or cheaper. So I only need to spend two oil now. Okay, uh, and that's that. On a card. Uh, so they're not that faction. They're going to just move a worker. So we take one off their home base. Uh, let's see here. Neighborhood of the most. So this is two. This is two. This is two. This is one. Two. One. Two. And it's reading order. Top. I think it's this spot. I think it's that spot. Because that's top, top reading order. Left to right. Top to bottom. Uh, when I have a whole bunch that are tied. Actually, no, sorry. It's, it's close to the factory first. Close to the factory. So I think it's this lake. I think it's this lake. Oh, yeah. Sorry. There's three units there. Three units. Sorry, sorry. Three units. I think this is the only spot. Yeah. It's this spot because there's three units there. Wow. I got there. Okay. Uh, and then they're going to gain a goal. And then they're going to move their track to the third row. Almost, almost flipping over to the aggressive side. So, uh, producing, I think I'm going to move. Where do I produce? No, I need to move first. I think I'm going to go crazy on the workers. Uh, so I'm going to move three different units. Let's move these guys over. Uh, let's move. You can keep that guy there. No, I move him down. That's the third one. Uh, where is it? Maybe not. So I want to move this mech in there, drop this guy off. But do I move the mech out? Yeah, I feel like I do. I'm going to move this mech here. Mm, no. Uh, yeah, I'll move the mech there. Uh, then I want to, so the mech moved one, drop the guy off two. That's one unit movement. Then this character is going to do a whole move in the lake and then move over to here to this encounter token. Because that's its two move. It can move to and from lakes and bring the metal with her. And the last one. I think. No, uh, I 
want to get metal going to build the mechs. But I also want oil generation still. So I'd be doing the mill, two other spaces, worker. Yeah, I think we'll hold one more off on the metal. Mm. No. No, let's move these guys. Yeah, let's move those guys. We'll just keep this mech with them. So this mech was one move. This mech was one move carrying those workers, this character. I think it's my three movement. Okay, so I think we're okay. Those are my three move mints. Uh, then I'll spend this three wood to do the bottom row action. I'll get a coin. Uh, and I'm going to build. Hmm. I'm going to build the monument. Uh, it has to be where I have a worker. And this isn't really good for scoring purposes, but... Uh, I guess I could build it on that mine. Or on the tunnel. No, I'll just build it here. I'll just build it there. That's fine. Oh, sorry, the encounter. Yes, thank you. Forgot again. I might change, but I don't think it'll change much, but. All right. Number three. I heard the sheep. On the hillside for an afternoon. Gain two food, one popularity. Serve lamb for dinner tonight. Pay two gold. Gain a worker and three food. Ooh. Uh, or use the sheep to trip up a passing mech. Pay threat popularity to play a mech. So I'm going to do the first two options. So gain two food. And one popularity. Then I'm going to pay two. Two gold. Uh, to gain a worker. Okay. Oh, that's neat. Oh, so I can build it down here. Ah, it doesn't make a difference. Still got this one covered. Uh, then three more food. Yeah, so that, that does add an option to where I could have built that building. So that's interesting. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is actually build that building down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Got a monument hiding down here. That's fine. All right. Thank you, guys. I, I always forget. I would have looked down next time I go to move my character, and I would have been like, oh, whoops. Yeah, I always forget. Okay. Um, I need nice wooden upgraded tokens for that to pop off the board. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, then we'll go uh, Automa. And uh, we're going to move a worker. So let's take one off the home base. Uh, let's check some neighborhoods. Two, 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 one, 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 one. No, this is two, but it's next to a combat unit. I don't think it can do that. Uh, yeah, not in the neighborhood of any combat units. Enemies, enemies, no enemies. Doesn't like that. Uh, closest to the factory with two, I think, is this lake. Because there's two here. I don't see anywhere where it could be three, but I might be missing something. I know I do need all the bling. <laughs> that was the one that I saw when I was at Gen Con buying like the upgrade stuff for games at Meeple Source. Uh, I almost did, but the Scythe upgrade kit was so expensive. But then I ended up buying all these realistic tokens later and then the money later. And if you add it all up, I still blew too much money on upgrading this game. But I played it so much that I, I just love having those components. I just love getting around a Friday night, going over to the in-laws, pulling it out, playing five, four or five player this game. Oh, love it. Love it. Uh, and then, could it go to the factory directly since no worker there? Ah, yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. You are correct. Because, yes, there's no worker in that spot. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the closest to the factory would be there. And it's still, that actually, that is a spot that is in the neighborhood of one two, three units. So that is the spot. Thank you, Marcus. For sure. For sure. That is the spot. I'm, I'm pretty sure now because there's no ties now. That's, that's in the neighborhood of three different spots. I just forgot there was no worker there with this guy. So th that's still valid. Uh, combat card. They draw another combat card. And then they're giving me a list bonus for combat cards. They're not moving their track. 
So I don't have to worry about them flipping the deck yet. Sweet. Yeah, I agree, Buell. I agree. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. This game just like... Oh, just blew my mind. Yeah, it just blew my mind. I was like hooked instantly. I was like, wow, this game... I just love everything about it. So different. So producing, <laughs> I now can enlist, I might enlist to try to get uh, combat cards drawn. I, I mean, that's already come up a couple times, but it might happen again. Oh no, it was money, popularity, and then the combat card bonus. Oh, there was power. Power, popular, yeah, a combat card came up twice. I mean, there are some on the other side too. So part of me is thinking of getting the power one uncovered and the card uncovered. And getting some of that stuff from here to help me with my objectives. And so I can win a combat, hopefully. So that could be a good spend on the food. I could trade to try to get some other resources that I need for another bottom row action, like metal. To help get my third mech out. So trade's looking good because I have the food for it. Um, what else? Move I just did. I can't do it. I could produce... Get some oil, some workers. Can't get my final two characters off yet. I want to kind of do that after another move. And I can't build a mech yet. Or I could do the power, but I don't have any oil for it. So that kind of answers the question of doing the action I get the most out of is the trade. Uh, but should I? So I can spend the gold. I could either go the oil route or the metal route. I already have a metal. If I go the oil route, I can do this first and do the bottom row, that could reduce the cost of the mechs, but then I still don't have what I need. Or I could produce, oh, do I do that? Hmm. But I could produce the metal I need. So I think I go oil actually. One of them is gonna be oil. I'll throw that here. And I think metal. I think metal. Because then if I reduce the cost of the mechs, that puts it down to two costs. And then I have two metal there ready to go. And if I produce, I'll get two metal there. Then I have my last two mechs covered. Then I can move off this, this space and not give a crap about metal anymore. And be done with it. Just done with it. All right. So then I'll do my bottom row action of spending for food. And we're going to enlist. Uh, I feel like mm, I mean the move action getting to worker to retreat is probably the safer one. Have at least seven power and complete a move action that forces at least one enemy worker to retreat. That'll drop me a popularity, which I'm kind of like don't like to do at all ever. Um, or I could have eight or more combat cards in hand and at least one combat victory star. I'm not guaranteed to win a combat either. So this one seems like the more the least resistant one. So I'm going to try to uncover the power. Since I'm going to try to start doing this more often, I think I'm going to go the power route. And because of that, I will go here for two power on the recruit bonus. Uh, I guess I can slide that over. I never got the factory card yet. All right. I really need a factory card, but whatever. Whatever. They wanted to block me. Uh, all right. That's that. Over to the Automa. Oil, oil, oil. No. All right. Uh, let's see here. We're going to move a mech. There is a mech on the board now. So this mech, let's see how mechs move. How does it tell us? A non-combat mech move. Non-attacking mech move. So we're going to select the Automa mech closest to the Automa's base. There's only one he's on the base. The valid hex is in the neighborhood of any unit or in the neighborhood of the base. No enemy units in the spot. No Automa Combat unit other than the one selected. You pick up the mech. Then you choose your valid hex based on those valid hex criteria. And then it has to be the shortest distance from enemy combat unit. Ignore units on the base unless there's no enemy combat units on the board. Then it's closest to factory, then reading order. That's what we're doing. All right, so pick this guy up. Uh, it's closest are here. So it's in the neighborhood of any unit. Gets me right next, either here or here. Or here. 
but it's reading order that breaks the tie. Since these are all just as close to the factory, I think it's this spot because top, top to bottom, left to right reading order uh, would drop it up there, I believe. And it's still adjacent to a, a combat unit, an enemy combat unit. Then we're going to bring another mech out to their home base. Then they're going to get two power up to 11. Then they're going to move their star. Boom. They get their first star. I'm just going to throw it anywhere on the track. You just put it near the track. I'll just throw it in the first spot, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to take their discard pile. Um, so we've got to just remember, this is one resource left on it. So if we get in a combat where I scare a guy off the spot right now, uh, you would get one resource from the space that they're on. So I just got to remember that as we shuffle all the cards back into the deck. And then we're going to start using the two side. So they have one star. I have nothing. I am going slow, bro. It is all good, though. Scythe is elegant. Yes, Bernardo. That is 100% the word to describe Scythe. Elegant. Agreed. Agreed. That is a beautiful word to use for this game. Okay. Uh, so we flip them around. They're going red side now. Um, it's us. So what were we saying we're going to do? <laughs> We are going to produce where we lose a power. I can choose two hexes and the mill spot. So we're going to do the mill for sure. We're going to get an oil. Uh, I want to do the two metal that are from these workers on this um, tunnel. And then I have one more building. Hmm. I could go for a wood, or I'm thinking of getting another worker on the board. But I'll start eating into my popularity if I start producing like that. Feel like it's going to be the wood spot. Yeah, let's do the wood. Done. Uh, then we can... Oh, no! You know what? I was supposed to do this side first, right? Because the oil... Why did I do that? I thought I had another oil. Oh, I should have done the two oil. I get it now, what you're saying, John. <laughs> uh, so I can't do the... Oh, I can do the bottom row. I can do the bottom row. I still have three metal. That was the plan. Yes, that was the plan. I am doing this right. I have four metal. Yeah, but I was supposed to only have two to spend two right now. I totally did that wrong if I said that before. All right, so three metal. We can do the bottom row. We're going to get two gold. It's fine. We'll just roll with it. Uh, then we're going to take a mech. We're going to do the popularity one uh, so I can force the workers to retreat. Uh, I don't want to sneak this in there because I want to do this. I'll put this guy up here. Just in case they come in and fight, I can use two combat cards and hopefully spend less power, but we'll see. Okay, Automa. Let's see what they get for the red side here. They're going to be more aggressive. Do they have at least eight power? If so, they're going to do a fighty fight. Yep, they're at 11, so let's get the first combat going. And it's going to be this guy, he's adjacent. Um, where is this? So here's the reference card, just for curiosity. So does the Automa have greater than that power? Yep, select the Automa combat unit, closest to Automa's base. Uh, oh, oh. Closest to Automa's base, so it would be this guy, this guy actually. Oh, yeah, because this is a move. This is a move that causes combat. Yes, this is right. And they, they teleport all over. So it's this guy back here. So he's going to go in the neighborhood of any Automa unit or in the neighborhood of Automa base contains an enemy combat unit. It's only this one. It's the only one neighboring to them that contains units. So I did it on purpose. That's why I loaded the mech there. Uh, you pick up the combat unit. Then you choose a valid hex with the fewest enemy combat units. But they have no choice here. I, I've kind of put them in a, a spot where they have to fight me with two units. And it would be closest to the factory than reading order. So I, I believe they go in here. And remember, even if they go in a spot with my workers, they never move their popularity. So they just, they're just, they don't even care. Okay. So let's do the combat. Uh, so that combat has its own card. So we choose our stuff first. Choose your combat power and combat cards. Then you draw an Automa card. Check the Automus power range. Determine their power. Reveal their combat cards. If they lose, you retreat them to their faction mat, not the base. 
Then you retreat the workers to the base, though. If the Automa wins, remove resources from Hex. They just disappear off the board because the Automa doesn't care. And if the player conquered an Automa controlled Hex, which we don't, we would have to determine resources, but we're not being the aggressor here. And then you resolve everything else as normal. Loser regain a combat card. So, how much power are we rolling with here? I only have four to spend. And I'm willing to spend three of that. I think I'm willing to spend three of that. And we can play two cards. Let's see. We got a five, a three, a two, and a two. So they could drop up to seven power here. They can reveal up to two cards. Uh, I'm going to throw in my five and three. And we're going to roll with 11. No worries, Marcus. <laughs> uh, no worries. No worries. Thanks a lot for the help. Uh, I think turn over the next Automa card for combat and resource determination. Uh, no, if, so if I was taking over their space and I need to get resources for knocking their unit out of one of their controlled areas, I would go by the resource thing on the last card in the discard pile. But because I just shuffled up, there were none left. So that's why they say, remember the last one that was in the discard pile, which was one resource. But in this case, they're fighting me and it's my controlled hex and there's no resources on the spot. We don't care about any of that stuff. Um, but... We're going to flip a card for combat in a sec. I just need to leave this out so we remember to continue with the rest of the card. Uh, all right. I could go up to... Do I spend it all? I have eight or more combat cards in hand, at least one combat victory star. See, that's going to be a problem. I could get the combat victory star here. Maybe. But then I don't have... I would have the star for later, and then I need eight combat cards. The problem is I'm blowing a bunch of power here, so that makes it harder. But I think I'll go for the eight combat cards, maybe. But then I'm spending combat cards right now. I don't know. But I don't want to lose this combat. So I'm going overkill. Um, yeah, I'll spend four power and do the eight off the cards. Okay, let's see what they're going to get. Go 13 total. So is that what I'm at? Eight plus 12. Or eight plus four, sorry. 12? I can go 12. That's as high as I can go. Combat. Do not lose popular and force the opponent's workers retreat. That's not happening. Yeah, I think that's as high as I can go. Alright, here we go. So they are at 11 power. So they're between 8 and 13. Oh man, they undercut me hard here. So they're only putting one in and drawing no combat cards. <laughs> I got burned! <laughs> Dirty, dirty Automa. Filthy, filthy Automa. Get your mech off the board, you dirty guys. All right, so I get a combat star. Oh, man, I just spent so much there. Uh, so those are going to discard pile. They'll get a card for losing. <laughs> they, they, they tricked me, and I, I love to do that playing Scythe, where you're going for a combat and you're purposely okay to lose, and then you're just setting up to like get, get them later after they blow a whole bunch of cards, and then you really worry about a different spot beautiful thing about scythe i love where then all of a sudden on the next turn you're like i'm moving into combat you here and then you they're like whoa i have no cards left what are you doing ah or i've spent all my power so they only spend one power <laughs> dirty uh so we're finishing this card they get a coin and a worker but they already got all their workers on the board and then i don't have the popularity thing uncovered for the recruit bonus but they're not moving along their track at all <laughs> dirty dirty filthy automa all right I think that's all my stuff. Oh, I got to spend my four power. So I'm done. I spent my power. Did I get everything else? I think so. <laughs> Stupid Automa. All right. It's fun to do it to others. Unless... <laughs> hmm. Love it. Love it. Okay, okay. Let's see next. Um, what are we doing? What are we doing? I feel like I haven't moved in a while, and I probably should. Hmm. I want to get my power up so then I can do other stuff too with it. 
Okay. Um, so we got the combat stars. So let's get some cards, actually. Maybe I do that. Maybe I do that. Yeah, let's do an upgrade. So we'll spend one gold. Uh, I don't know if we bolster or should I get combat cards. I feel like a bolster here just to get some power so I could produce still. I go up a popularity because I got the monument out of there. I'm going to spend two oil, do my bottom row action, three coins, and do an upgrade. I'm going to take it off this uh, produce action here. And let's make, what do I have? One mech, I have one building. Let's reduce the cost. Mm, how much do I have? I have one metal. I can get wood, metal. I can produce the metal I need. I'm gonna actually do it on the enlist action. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reduce that one. Seems weird, I know, I know. Uh, then I get a power. We're doing this bottom action. All right, Automa. Do they have seven power? Yup, they're gonna do a combat. Uh, closest to the home base. So out of these two units, who's closest to the home base? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. They're both the same. So it's closest to the factory. I think it's the character, right? Let's see, let's see. Uh, attack move. Uh, combat. They have the power closest to their base, tiebreaker reading order. So it's actually this guy. It's not a uh, factory for that tiebreaker. Wasn't one of the objectives about winning a combat? Yeah, it's if I have at least one combat star and eight or more combat cards in hand, which those conflict. And then the other one is have at least seven power and complete a move action this turn that forces at least one enemy worker to retreat. So I'm still far away from these objectives. That's the problem. Uh, I'm not playing into them correctly. All right. Uh, but I still got time, I think. So what was I doing? Uh, they're fighting. So let's see. So this guy is going to just fight the same spot. Yep. That guy's going to fight the same spot. Um, okay, now what do I want to do? I don't want to lose. So annoying. So annoying. So they could still spend up to seven power. They could drop a couple combat cards on me. I only have two twos in my power cards. I only have three power here. I feel like spending nothing. Yep. All right, uh, let's spend one power. Spend two cards to get another card at least. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't need to spend any power. So let's drop a two. No power. Uh, and they will come at me with uh, no cards, but only seven power. So I could have tied them, but I would have lost because they're the attacker. So they spend seven down to three and don't play any cards. And I lose this card, uh, but I get to draw one. And it's a three. Okay, so the camera doesn't want to focus, but it's a three. So that is that. Uh, so I retreat. And they got that spot. Ah, that sucks. All right. Uh, and they get a star for winning a combat. And now they get three more power after the combat. So they're up to six. I don't get a popularity. They're going to move along their track. Dirty. Filthy, dirty Automa. Hmm. OK. 
Okay, let's do a move, I think, but I can't do the wood on the bottom. Yeah, not getting a factory card is like very rough. That is okay, what can we do? Let's get my character out of there. I'm thinking of moving so I can get my character out of here, maybe go towards another encounter somewhere. Um, I could move this, these guys off the base. Yeah, let's do a move. Even though I can't build my building, I might do a trade, but I'm one food short of doing the bottom action on that. Uh, but I could trade for one food, one wood. Hmm. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. Could go a few ways here. I could produce, get some workers out, but I wouldn't max out on the workers. I wouldn't have the metal because I don't have a spot with metal right now. So I can't do that bottom row. But I can move to be in a better producing spot, I think. Yeah, I'm going to move. Uh, let's take one of these mechs off here. It'll drop a worker here and bring another worker here. So that's just two spaces. Uh, let's do the character through a lake over here. I'll leave this guy here. Um, what is it? I need to have eight cards and no seven power and scare the guy off the spot. Yeah. Let's bring this guy out here to protect ish this spot. I don't think that'll work too well though. That's my three units. Bottom row action, no dice. All right, Automa. Uh, they're gonna move a mech in a non-combat friendly way. Um, okay, this is interesting. So I think this mech actually moves back, right? It's the only mech on the board. Uh, let's see. Here. Closest to the Automa's base. Boom, that guy. Uh, in the neighborhood of any Automa unit or in the neighborhood of Automa's base, no enemy unit, no Automa, Automa combat unit, then a valid hex, shortest distance from enemy combat unit, closest to the factory. I feel like it moves here. It's close to the factory. And reading order wise, it, it would be this spot over this spot. I think it just shifts that way. Oh no, it could, no, yeah, it wouldn't be here because that's not adjacent to an enemy unit. So yeah, I think that's how that works. Because it has to be a valid hex that's in a neighborhood of any Automa unit or in their base. So now that's in the neighborhood of this Automa unit. And yeah, closest to the factory, then reading order. Yep, I think that's the spot. I think that's the spot. Okay, uh, what else was on the card? Sorry, where was that card? I just, nope, there it is. Uh, two power. Now it's up to eight, of course. Uh, they're gonna get a mech going in their home base. And then I get a power from the recruit bonus. And they're gonna move up one on their track. Done. Let's see here. Seven power and force a worker off. That, I need to do this. This is what I think I need to do. Uh, all right, so I think we're gonna produce. And, oh, but we're not on the metal yet. Oh, that's what I didn't do. I didn't move guys onto the metal. But I have one metal. Oh yeah, I messed up. Yep, I definitely messed up. I'm gonna have to take some inefficient turns here. Kind of correct things. I don't have oil either. Yeah. But 
I think I produce, get all my workers out. Then I do a move to get workers on the metal spot. But I won't have, yeah, because the produce would get me the wood I need to then do a, uh, where is it? Another move to do my last building. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do the produce. We'll spend a power down to three. Uh, we'll get all our workers out here. One worker here. Sorry, I should lay these down. Uh, two workers here. Okay, so those two spots. I could do a third and the um, mill. So the mill's an oil. And then we'll do the two wood up here. Hard to win. Uh, all right. And then bottom row action I can't do because I don't have the metal, which is fine. And now we're going to do the next card. They're going to move a worker. So we're going to take this one off the home base. Uh, in the neighborhood of the most units, I think is here because this has three in the neighborhood. So does this. Actually, this spot because it's reading order, right? And it's not adjacent to an enemy unit. And it's closest to factory. Yeah, I think that's the spot. Uh, four power, uh, where is it? Up to 12. Then I get a power because the recruit bonus, that's been paying off, all right. And then we're gonna move them up to the next row. All right, our turn. Uh, so what was I saying before? <laughs> this is a problem, I forget like what I was doing. Uh, so move, we said we're gonna move before. So we get some oil maybe and produce again. That might not be a good play either because then we're going to lose popularity, money, and power. Can we get... We have four power. Oh, we have the wood now though. Yeah, let's do the move. Uh, so these two jokers are going to move down here to this oil producing spot. Uh, I'm going to move onto this spot with my character. So that's two units. And we don't need wood anymore. Oh, you know what I do though? feel like I go and spread my love all around here. So this guy's going to go through the mine over to here. And then he's going to go one, and do I leave? Yeah, we'll just leave him there. I feel like that's where I go. Oh no, I need to go and scare them out of a spot, right? Yeah, that's the thing. I need to set that up. So instead of going through the mine, I'll go through the mine up here. And I'll bring these guys with. I'll leave one behind. And... But then I'm kind of stuck. No, I'll do it out of this spot. Oh no, this spot. Mm. No, we'll do the original. I'll leave Yeah, one guy behind. I'll just move all the rest here. Yeah, let's just do what I was originally doing. Just trying to cover more spaces on the board to get more territories under control. Um, and then maybe be in a spot so I can move in here and, and snipe one of these guys. Uh, just to get that objective done if I get to that point of having 7 power. So this guy moved. This mech. The character moved. Oh, this, these guys can't move together like that. It would only be one. But that's okay still. I think that's okay. Yeah, we can leave one of these guys here. For now. So it was this mech, this worker, this character. That's it. That's it. I want to do so much, but you can only do so much. All right. So then we'll spend our three wood. That was the bottom row action. Oh, no. Encounter first. I almost did it again. Encounter. Almost did it again. All right. Let's see what we get for the encounter card. Ooh, it's snowy. Assist the workers with oil rig repairs. Gain two money and one popularity. Invest in the oil field. Pay four to keep this card. At the beginning of your turns, you may gain one oil on a territory control. Well, I wish I saw that a long time ago. Or pillage your oil refinery, pay three popularity, gain one upgrade and two oil. I'll just do the first two. Uh, so we gain two money. 
and one popularity, so we're in the middle part now, that's great. Then we're gonna pay four. Four money, come on, give me that. To keep this card. So at the beginning of my turns, I won't remember, but we're gonna get an oil. <laughs> uh, all right. I wish I got some oil right now though. Okay, so now we're gonna do the bottom row action, which was the three wood. Done. Uh, we get a coin, which I'm going to trade these two back and just take a three. Uh, and we're gonna do our last building. Are we near a spot where that can count? Yes, we are. We're gonna put this building right here, so we're beside these two tunnels. Yeah, that feels good. Uh, and that's our last building, so we gotta start. Start number two. Uh, buildings. Man. <laughs> Feels so slow. I don't know if it's the board in the mix or my choices or what, but yeah, I feel like I'm like very slow with this. Okay. Uh, Audema. Not their faction. Uh, they're going to move a mech. Non-combat move. Closest to the home base. Adjacent to my unit. Closest to the factory, I believe it's here or here, but reading order would tell me it's there. Dirty, filthy Automa, get away from me. All right, uh, then they're gonna get a gold <laughs> uh, and they're gonna get another mech out on their home base. And then I would get the recruit bonus for gold, but I don't have it. They're gonna move one on their track, one more move and they're gonna get the star. All right, so we need a mech out. Uh, these recruit bonuses are way too far away still. Mm -hmm. So I think it's produce time, right? But I don't have the metal again. What did I do wrong, man? I messed something up. I messed something up. The oil. Do I have the two oil? I don't have two oil. What did I do wrong there? I have not produced yet, right? That's what I just need to do. But why didn't I go on a spot with metal? Oh, man, I messed up. I should have moved my two guys here to the metal instead of doing this whole trickery stuff here. That was being silly. All right, so let's, yeah, what happened there? I didn't move for producing, I messed up. So let's, oh, start of my turn, right? I get an oil, that's it. I get an oil at the start of my turn. Okay. Oh, I have the eight workers out. Yes. I didn't get the star for the workers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. All right. <laughs> I'm not as far behind as I thought, but I feel far behind. Uh, all right. Mm. Yeah. So now we're going to do this. Pay one. Uh, we'll bolster. One, two, up to six. Uh, we get a popularity. Then we get to do an upgrade. Oil spend. Uh, we get three coins for this. We also get a power. Uh, I feel like we go... I'm going to take this one off here. And... Let's go sell this one down here. Maybe enlistment can help. I don't know. Oh, I do have two food. Yes, I do have two food. So that is good, I think. Okay, done. Automa, what do you got? Uh, they're going to try to grab an encounter token with their character. Which there are... Uh, let me check. I don't think it can be where I have a thing, can it? Uh, let's see. 
So grab the character. In the neighborhood of any Automa unit, uh, the factory or a hex with an encounter token, pick a valid hex. Says no enemy unit, no Automa mech. Closest to the factory, I think is this one. So it'll just go here and remove. Uh, where are those? Oh, right here. Okay. And three power. One, two, three. One away from doing the final one, I think. Uh, all the workers are out. I would draw a combat card for a recruitment bonus. They're going to move one on their track and get another star. Let's throw it there. Hey, Rory. Uh, how do you like the solo play? It's fine. It's fine. I prefer this game multiplayer any day. I don't think I'd pull this out if I just want a solo game experience. A, the setup is a while. Uh, if I haven't played in a while, I'd have to refresh myself on all the movement rules. So I just feel like the movement and the complexity, like the eight reference cards, the 12-page rule book and all that, is a little too much to get a game solo to the table. But if you love Scythe, I love that it exists so I could just play Scythe. But I have a lot of players that I could play Scythe with. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like it, but it's just not my preferred way to play Scythe. Have you kept Rob safe? <laughs> no. All right. Uh, let's see here. And hello, Sajat. All right. I don't remember. We just did their turn, right? My turn. Um, so we're going to do a trade to get our metal we needed, I think. Yeah. Let's do a trade action. Spending one. We're going to gain two metal. Let's throw it down here. We get a power. And then we can do the bottom row action to spend two food. And we enlist. Uh, let's, should we try to rifle up the popularity track maybe? Or the combat card thing? Maybe combat cards? No, let's go the popularity. And what we're going to do is grab two popularity right now. One, two. Okay. Um, yeah, John's right. The Automa is unfortunately as simple as it could be for a reasonable challenge. I agree. It's a good job of how they did it for Scythe, but some games you just don't need to be solo, right? Like some games just work better as solo games and it's usually competitive or cooperative games. This isn't a cooperative game by default. So to, to rope a competitive game into a soloable game, it's a challenge. I agree. They did a, a fine job here. But just in the world of board games, of solo games I've played so far, eh, not really a fan of getting into this one for a solo game. But it's still cool. I do want to do in the future one stream where I play against a whole bunch of Automa. We spend like all day where we're just going all around. They're fighting each other and stuff. And we just it's just a big, big crap show on the board here. But uh, that's, that's down the road. <laughs> for now, just one opponent. <laughs> all right. Uh... So we enlisted. There's no gold for that. We got the popularity. Their turn, right? Right, right, right. Uh, so let's see here. They're going to move a worker. Uh, there's none on their base. So closest to their base. This one in reading order. Uh, or is, yeah, that one, I think. Most units. This is right here. Oh, but it can't be in the neighborhood of my unit. I feel like it would be here, but there's already a worker. It's somewhere with this guy, I think. This is in the space of three, but so is this. I think it's here because of reading order. Because then it's in the neighborhood of one, two, three. It could be here, but that's... Yeah. <laughs> Three on my win by completely distracting Rob. Yeah. I probably would shut off chat if I was running that kind of a stream and just not get another distraction, but I would just try to focus to make sure I got all their moves right. But yeah, it'll, it'd be crap. I'd probably just play the digital version at that point too. That's the other problem. Uh, there's the digital version for this. Okay. Uh, two power. So they get a star by hitting the... Whoops. By hitting the uh, top of the power track, 
uh, which is up there somewhere, right here. So they're at four stars. I'm really falling behind here. Uh, they gain a worker, but they don't have one. I gain a popularity from the recruit bonus. Yay. And then they move up on their track. I'm running out of time here. Let's see if I can finish this out. So I have the seven power. I could do the objective thing, but is that the right call? Uh, so that would involve moving. I've already done the buildings though. Hmm. What am I trying to do here? I need to build a mech. I have enough for that mech. I could produce. But that's why am I producing? To get the mech built. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, free oil. Thank you. Which I keep forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh... Hmm. So the free oil is not enough to get me there's no oil hiding up here, but to produce, yeah, I think I go with the produce action, spend a power, spend a popularity, spend a gold. Although, do I have anything? Uh, although I'm not on a farm or anything, this might not be the right thing to do here. I think I move first. Yeah, let's put that back. Uh, let's move first. How do we want to move? Can't move our character. I feel like this guy needs to move in and kick this guy out. We'll do that in a sec. Uh, this guy needs to move here to get on the food space. Not be next to an automa. And this guy needs to take these three one, two, and drop on a food space down here, I think. I think. Is that the right way to do it? I feel like it is. So I move this mech, I move this mech, and I move this mech. I think that's all the shenanigans. Did you get it last turn? I probably forgot an oil last turn. With one every turn, you should have two already. I probably should. I probably should. I was thinking that too, but I'm okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll get the oil. I think I have two. I feel like I didn't do it. So what I do when we play multiplayer usually, I, I put oil like on the card so we remember. But <laughs> so it's like, why is there oil sitting on this card here? Oh yeah. All right. Um, so that's my move. Bottom row, nothing. All right, Automa, please don't end the game. All right, let's see here. Combat if they have five power. You bet they have five power, but... Oh, sorry, I forgot to knock this guy away. He goes home base, and I lose the popularity. But, end of the turn, actually. I have at least seven power, and I complete a move action that forces at least one enemy worker to retreat. Oh, but I don't... Oh, in combat, sorry. In combat, I don't lose popularity, but I still lose it when I do that, because uh, that wasn't combat. So sorry, I forgot to cash in my objective. I'll just get rid of both these. 
uh, objective start. Forgot the objective. That should have been at the end of my turn. Yes, I forgot to finish this whole business. Uh, okay. Uh, what are they doing here? Yeah, as soon as I read combat, I'm like, oh, I forgot about this. Uh, five. Yes. Combat. I think it's this guy. This is the only one adjacent to any one of their... So, I think we're fighting at the factory here. This guy's going to jump in from their home base to here. Um, yeah, this is important because now I want to spend power, right? I can win a second combat, but I only have like five in power cards. But I still think I go all in. So seven, down to one. Put five cards in, or five in power cards. And let's see what they do. I want that factory. Get out of my space. Oh, no. They're going to put in seven power and two combat cards. Uh, so that is nine, I believe. Yes, nine and two cards at random. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. So this is the combat card they're playing. All right. <laughs> oh, I can only spend one combat card. You're correct. You're correct. Whoops. You're correct. I don't have two units in this fight like I did last time. Woo! Okay, so they're getting two, though. So I'm probably losing this combat. Ah! So do I even spend? Nah, I still try, I think. Yeah, yeah. I would still try. Doesn't matter now. I've already seen their card, so I gotta do it. Alright, we're just gonna do these two. And lose the combat, probably. Yeah, they got seven. Plus seven is 14. I get wrecked. Boom! They get another star for their second combat. And they now have the factory... And I spent at least, yeah, I spent a ton of power. That's good. All right, this goes away. I draw a card. A two. Great, good times, good times. Um, and then they finish this card. They spent their power. I spent my power. They got a star. They're one away from closing it out. I'm two. Great. Uh, then they are going to get their mech on their home base and a coin. More money. Uh, and then they move it forward on this track, which is not a star yet. One more, and it's a star, and it's over. Beautiful. All right. That's that. My turn. I get an oil. So this could be the last of the game. Which I definitely don't know what to do. Um, a mech could get me a star. Producing could get me some more uh, items here. This could get me a popularity. Uh, where am I at? 10 or 11? I don't even know what I'm at there. 10, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I have three more upgrades to do. So that I didn't think I would be doing that at all. Uh, getting the mech out. But I lose the popularity. But that doesn't change score at all. I still have a power here. Hmm. Yep. Okay, let's just do... I don't know. Just get the mech out, I guess? Yep, let's drop a popularity. Let's just get this done. Uh, and a gold. And... Um, so we'll produce on three hexes plus the mill. So we're oil on the mill. Uh, let's do two food here. Two food down here. And I have the metal. I just guess I got to keep it away from them, I think. Um, sure. Let's do a metal down here. All right. Uh, so now we're going to do the bottom row action. We'll spend three. Uh, we'll get two money. So this one back. Two money. Uh, and then we'll produce our last mech. I'll just throw them right here. And we get a star for that. Uh, the next. Okay, Anima. See if they end it. 
Uh, what do I want to do here? So they want to do combat move against uh, one of my lone workers. Uh, but I don't see one adjacent. No. I don't see one adjacent. I kept them away. Now they just want to move a worker. So this worker over here. Uh, I feel like he wants to go here because it's a neighborhood of one, two, three, four, five, and it's on the factory. Yeah, I feel like that's where he wants to go. I don't think it matters. All right, one, two, three, and they get a money. And I could get a combat card, but I don't have that revealed. And they move their star. Boo! And that will move their last one up here somewhere. And that ends it. All right, let's do the score totals. It's a little different for scoring these guys. Um, so the Automa scores coins as if they were a human player. Four coins per star placed, including those outside the triumph track. And then three coins per territory controlled. Since they don't produce resources or build structures, they don't gain coins for those. I score just as in a multiplayer game, except for that the resources you score are a maximum of six per territory. So you can't you can't just sit down here and like build up resources on a spot past six because you only get to score six per hex. Uh, the winner is determined as usual, except the resources are not used to break ties. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's clean up some of their money here to help us math this out a bit. All right, so we're in the same scoring track here. So let's just do them uh, for four gold for every star. So they have all six, right? So that's 24, uh, 20. And we have a one here, so let's just make it 25. And we can trade this in for a 20. Okay, uh, and then three for every hex they control. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen times three, thirty-nine. Unless I missed any. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13. Wow. Okay, uh, and then that's them. I think they're done. Okay, uh, my scoring. Uh, so we'll start with the stars, I guess. So what did I get out? Five. So 20 for my stars. Oh, I got 10 gold already on my mat here. Let me just trade that in for a 10. Uh, next is three for every territory. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times three is thirty. Uh, and then what? Uh, oh, every two resources, I get two gold. So it's really a gold per resource, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's only eight. Eight gold, two gold for every two. Eight. Um, all right, let's just double check. Two. So one, two, four, six, eight, nine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then last is this little building bonus thing here. Uh, and I have built buildings beside. I got one tunnel covered two tunnels covered, three and four tunnels covered. Yeah, I don't have these two up here covered. So we get six more gold. I think that's it, right? Okay, so they have 30, 40, 49, 49, right? And I have, what do we have over here? Uh, let's trade that. No, no, I'm miscounting. 60, <laughs> whoa, uh, 60, 69 over here, right? 69, that was a 10. And they had another 20 under there. So now I'm at 60, uh, I can even trade this, mm, this in. What do we got here? Nine. 
So I have 60, 70, 74. 74 to 69. Unless I messed something up there, but I don't think I did. Yes, so I won. Boom. Unless I forgot something, but yeah. Oh, I know. The metal coins, love it. Uh, let's see what was in the factory here. Ah. Oh, that would have been good early. Tossing cards. I wouldn't have cared about combat if I could just get my resources so easily like that. That would have been helpful too for me not to waste time on this uh, this side of the board. I, I didn't have to do it anyway. But then a popularity just to get these guys out and upgrades. Not really a fan. And then they tossed away... Uh, oh, two, oh, this is nice. This is one they tossed away. Two gold for a recruit and a power. Oh, man. And the list... Yeah. Ah. I always love getting a factory card, but man. Automa is 79? Did I mess that up? Oh, sorry, 79. I knew I messed it up. Man, I, I'm so drained. I can't even count. All right, thank you. 79, wow. Yes, these are 20s. 60, 79. So I lost by... What did I say I had again? I can't even remember. I have 74. Yes, so I lost 79 to 74. Dope. Yes, I lost by 5. Which makes sense. I felt like I didn't play well. So that makes sense that I lost. Because I was like, man, I didn't play efficiently at all. Because usually you focus, like John was saying earlier, just focus on like three spots on here. But I took too long. I shouldn't have been worrying about enlistments. And if I did, I should have done them way earlier. But I should just not even bother with that. But yeah, it's still cool. I just want to show you Scythe, how to play it. And that that's how it plays. But it's still tight. I played like ho-hum and it was still close. So they give you a hard difficulty if you play properly and efficiently. You would probably crush normal mode. Uh, and then you could just play the hard mode one if you need a challenge. And then there's an even crazier mode on top of that. Uh, which I'll probably never play. But uh, maybe I'll try a hard one day and play like serious. Uh, but yeah. That's Scythe Digital. Or Scythe Solo, sorry. Scythe Solo. Which gets me on to the point about digital. I don't think I'd ever play this solo physically again other than one more time on stream for fun to show how crazy it is running multiple Automa. I want to try that one time for fun. But I have the digital version of Scythe. That's usually how I play it solo. I go in there, put a bunch of AI in, and just play on the computer. I don't have to pull out the box. I don't have to separate all the components. don't have to get all the trays out. don't have to even refresh myself really too much on the rules because it kind of handles everything for you. Uh, I don't need to shuffle any decks or anything like that. It's just clickety-click, you know, drag and drop, that kind of stuff. Um, bit more clickety-click, but uh, yeah. And then you don't have to have me mathing coins out that are in weird denominations that I'm going to mess up. Uh, yeah, Bernardo's got it in Steam. Yes, you can get it on Steam. I don't know if it's available for Android or iOS, but I know it's on Steam. And I have it on PC. Oh, the AI in the digital is not that great, though. Oh, I did not know that. When I play, I just play to play Scythe. I, I don't... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But is the AI better than this AI? Like, I feel like it is. I feel like it's fine. But I don't really pay attention to the AI in Scythe Digital until, like, combats and stuff are going to happen. I don't watch what they do. I like the way in the digital version, you do your turn, and then they just go through their turns really fast. <laughs> Uh, John saying, but a lot of Scythe is how fun the components feel. I agree, and that's when I'll get a whole bunch of players over and we'll play Scythe with the components. I'd rather have the best of both worlds. So if I'm going to play with these nice components, I want people around the table to play against. Because that's the way Scythe is meant to be played, in my opinion. It is coming to iOS and Android sometime soonish. Already out in Europe. Wow, okay. Good to know. Janet, thank you so much for the tip. Um, but yeah, the digital version's fine. Like, it, it's okay. It's not the best digital implementation of an app either. It's like a little wonky and like the button sizes and stuff, they're a little weird. It's a little rough around the edges, but I still can sit down, boot that up, and play a game of Scythe in almost more time than it takes me to set all this up out on a table. And especially if I haven't played in a while, the extra time of me reading through the 12-page rule book to make sure I remember all the special rules for the Automa. But... If you play Solo Scythe a lot, this stuff just becomes second nature. You just get used to it and you just do it. And if you don't care as much and you just kind of guess and think, yeah, that's probably where they go. Like I got to eventually. I don't want to slow down playing. I don't want it to become uh, 
like problem solving part of the game. Like this is a game within a game of trying to figure out where you're moving the units. Um, but they did a, a crazy thing and made Solo Scythe, which I can't do that. So all the praise to the Automa Factory for doing this and putting this together. It's crazy that they did it. And it's cool that it comes in the box by default. You don't need to buy anything extra, uh, which I think is great. But personally, my opinion is I would never, ever pull this out to play solo uh, unless I was trying to show somebody how it works, like you guys right now on stream, or unless I'm going to do that crazy stream with all the Automa in the future. But if that happens, I'm not even sure. I got to find a way. I might just do the Scythekick app thing because that seems to be the easiest way to get a bunch of decks going um to play so i might just do it that way but you know that's normal difficulty but again if you're in lockdown or your gaming group is not showing up or they don't want to play scythe with you anymore and you need a way to play scythe this works this works you can play scythe you can get your fix follow these little automa cards put the units on the board as you saw i just played scythe it felt like scythe i was getting rushed by the player though the players i usually play with i usually have a few more turns so maybe that's my problem i'm playing like i play normal scythe and just kind of kind of take it slow. And I wasn't being aggressive. I usually am not aggressive when I play Scythe. I like to just build my engine and kind of kind of play defensively and kind of scare people away from attacking me. Um, but yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Scythe Digital is an okay game for its price, says Matthias. Yeah, that's probably an accurate statement. That's probably a very accurate statement. Again, I only bought Scythe Digital when it was like on a good sale a couple of years ago. Or maybe like a year and a half. No, maybe it was a couple years ago. That game's been out for a bit, Scythe Digital, I feel like. At least a couple years, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, I bought it when it was on like one of those crazy Steam sales and it was like super cheap. Uh, you can also get it in like Humble Bundles and stuff because it's part of the Asmodee Digital, I believe, uh, part of that umbrella. So they put it on sale a lot with the other Asmodee games or like in bundles or uh, the publisher sales. So just add Scythe Digital to your wish list and watch it. I probably wouldn't pay full price for that unless you really, really, really love Scythe. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's an okay, uh, way to play Scythe, but again, it's got its trade-offs. Anyways, anyways, any questions, anything about the solo mode? I think I covered everything. Um, oh yeah, I just wanted to look at the, uh, the other difficulty stuff and show that to you guys here. See if we can get it. So there's this thing, adjusting the difficulty, so this is on the back of the rule book, uh, adjusting the difficulty in Automa personality. So here's the three difficulties. So for beginners, there's the normal, there's Automazina for veterans and Ultimazina for those who are better than the Automa design team. And then there's all special rules for that. You can customize the difficulty. Um, by using the regular difficulty and then just ignoring when they, they pull like uh, the, the automata cards that say ignore them for the turn. Uh, each time the automata gains power, give it one or two power more or less than what's listed on the card. It can never lose power through negative modifiers. Every time the automata would move a unit, flip over a combat card from the deck on the board. If it's a four or five, the automata takes no move action this turn. So there's all these like little ways here they have to adjust the difficulty to fine tune it if you're like really into playing this over and over again. And you want to find like the best way you want to play. So I just played the default normal difficulty way today. But like I said, there's there's a whole bunch of points here you can do to change it. Not to mention the difficulty. And then here's all the special rules for Ultima Xena. Ultima Xena. That sounds like a cool name. <laughs> hmm. Name for a child, eh? Ultima Xena. Ultima, Ultima Xena. Ultima Xena Warrior Princess. Hmm, seems good. But anyways, that's Scythe Solo. Uh, and that was fun. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. Thanks to everyone who supports the channel. You're awesome. Uh, and yeah, we got some other games coming up on the channel. So tomorrow I'm going to try Viticulture Digital. Uh, I installed it. I've not really played through it yet. I'm going to be. I'm going to try it tonight uh, and play it on stream tomorrow. Same time. Uh, we'll be trying that out on Android. Uh, so we're going to play some Viticulture Digital and... and uh, I'm going to try to refresh myself a bit on the Viticulture rules first. Uh, just because I heard the tutorial in the app is not that great. 
Uh, and then after that is Mansion of Madness tomorrow evening. After that Viticulture stream, we're doing a Mansion of Madness playthrough. We are replaying the same scenario we played during the 24 hour live stream that everyone voted for as the game to play during that live stream. And then the live stream was not archived by YouTube, so we lost it. But we also talked in that playthrough. Uh, I don't want to spoil how it went, but we do want to retry it. See how different the scenario, scenario is based on the replayability of the Mansion of Madness app. Uh, so it's the cult. The Cult of the Sentinel Hill, I believe, or Cult of Sentinel Hill. So we're going to replay that. Kyle's coming. He's going to play with us. We'll probably change up our characters. Try some different characters. The game should give us different items and stuff to start with. And it may lay out the map differently, so we'll see. Uh, but we're going to play that. Uh, so the only people who have seen us play that scenario are the ones who are there for the live stream, which, uh, yeah, is, is a few of you. But uh, we're going to be replaying that tomorrow night, so tune in for that. Uh, that's scheduled and on the channel. And then this weekend, pending any shipping delays... We will be starting on Friday evening, uh, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. Again, shout out to Conjay Studios. Uh, look that up on YouTube. Subscribe to his channel. He is awesome. He went and grabbed a copy for us in the U.S. He's shipping it from the U.S. up here uh, for me. I was unable to cross the border because it's locked down because of COVID-19. Uh, so the U.S. and Canada border is blocked. So normally I would just drive an hour uh, down to the States go to a Target, grab my copy, drive home another hour, and I would have the game. But I'm not allowed to cross the border right now. There's no way to order from Target online to ship to Canada. So I paid Ganje. He went early morning, got a copy. He reserved a copy ahead of time, grabbed copy, one for him, one for himself. He was awesome for doing that. Then went out the next day and shipped it with FedEx for me and, and dealt with all that. So shout out to Ganje Studios. You can see on my main page, it's in the featured channels. Uh, if you hit the channel tab on my main YouTube page, you'll find his channel in there. Go subscribe to him. He's awesome. He's doing playthroughs on his channel and stuff. But thank you, Conjay, for doing that for us. So hopefully that arrives. It looks like it should show up tomorrow. Uh, but we'll be jumping into Jaws of the Lion, doing another one of our campaign playthroughs we love to do on the channel. Uh, Mel and I are going to start at two-player. So, yeah, Buell, you're going to have issues supposedly till late this week. Maybe Friday they'll show up with more copies. But I feel like it's a game uh, that's going to be hard to find, A. Because it turns out it's not just a junky version of Gloomhaven like some thought, like myself. Uh, some people like myself thought it was just going to be a dumbed down, junky version of Gloomhaven that I wouldn't want to play. I would just wait for Frosthaven. But as it turns out, a lot of reviews are saying it is exactly Gloomhaven. The exact rules, new enemies, new characters, characters are compatible with Gloomhaven. Uh, has a lot of the same items and, and that kind of stuff in the game. Uh, but the setup and teardown is zero, basically. You just get your components out, open a book or two books, join them together, boom, you're playing a scenario. You've done that scenario, move on to the next one. It also has a five-scenario campaign to teach you Gloomhaven. Learning Gloomhaven is a beast. The rule book is huge. The FAQ is even bigger. Uh, the monster movement rules, all that stuff is a nightmare, unless you... I don't know. It's just a nightmare. Uh, but it's cool. Gloomhaven, even despite all those, is still an awesome game to play. I love it. One of my favorites. Uh, but this supposedly can get you into Gloomhaven. And you can get anyone pretty much playing Gloomhaven by playing those first five scenarios. that like ease you into the Gloomhaven rules. And then it shoots you off into a uh, total. It's 25 scenarios. So it's like a 20 scenario campaign. Uh, but there's branching paths supposedly. So you don't play all the scenarios every playthrough. Uh, but it's supposedly just Gloomhaven. It's just a smaller Gloomhaven package. Uh, a little shorter. Uh, the rules are streamlined, supposedly, but not not really changed. I don't know. Uh, Buell, remember the initial playthrough, the initial scenario is like baby steps. So those first five scenarios, each scenario, they give you a little bit more of Gloomhaven. But it's not until like scenario six, you're fully in with all the Gloomhaven rules. So if you just saw an initial playthrough of the first scenario, supposedly it's like super short. Uh, and they're just kind of like getting you used to moving a character around. Like it's it's baby, baby game. Baby game until you get into it further. Uh, which we'll see here on Friday night. Uh, but people are scalping that game. That's the problem. That game, because it, they only printed like six, six copies. No, they didn't print. They only stocked six copies per target-ish, supposedly. And then since the rules were good, and people are saying it's a great copy of a way to get into Gloomhaven and play Gloomhaven. And it's supposedly a pretty good game. The reviews are all positive so far. Everyone's going to be buying it up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, tickle. 
One sec. <coughs> oh, Dice Tower gave it most. Sacabra saying Dice Tower and most others gave it a 10 out of 10. Oh, Buell, you're saying, oh, the simplified setup. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. I get what you're saying. I, I was thinking the game uh, itself. Well, supposedly the gameplay is exactly Gloomhaven once you get into it, which I'm looking forward to getting back into Gloomhaven and getting back on the table. And it will help me refresh myself on the rules of Gloomhaven and get back into it. And I'm going to try out the game just playing in it. I don't know how much I'll read in advance, uh, but we'll kind of just start it on Friday night, casually get into it, get it going. And we'll play through the first couple scenarios. Um, try to keep it spoiler-ish light. Uh, and not go too far. But then we plan on playing it on Saturday and Sunday. Those are all scheduled. You can go to youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. And set reminders on all that there. Oh, there's Conjay in the chat. Uh, yeah, Conjay Studios right there. Go, go to his page. Subscribe to his page. He's the reason we're actually getting the game uh, before August. Uh, when we normally would get it. And Shane makes a good point. That's the other thing. There will be spoilers, but some people just don't care to play big games like this or don't have time. So uh, if they just want to watch us play it. So Shane says, I'm glad for channels like you because I have no interest in playing it myself, but I'll watch it all. <laughs> awesome, Shane. We'll see you on Friday night. <laughs> if not, Saturday. Uh, let's see. So Copper's saying, he and Rado both said they'd pay full price to have the booklet in a real Gloomhaven. Ah, like the... Um, the playing out of a book instead of all the tiles and stuff. Uh, that's not a bad idea. And Buell says, what I saw, it was Gloomhaven. That is part of the reason why I want it. Yeah, I can understand. That's why I want it too. <laughs> I love Gloomhaven. I love playing through that game. I want to go back and play more Gloomhaven. This will help me learn, relearn Gloomhaven again uh, and get it back to the table. So we'll play through this scenario of Gloomhaven or this, uh, this Gloomhaven Jaws of Lion. And I hope that is enough to teach me so that we can then put real Gloomhaven back on the table and eventually jump into Forgotten Circles and then eventually Frosthaven. So uh, all good things Gloomhaven are coming and I, I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I've spent like, I don't know, probably like 200 hours uh, messing around with original Gloomhaven. Uh, Kanji, yes, we finished the main story of Gloomhaven in our playthrough. Uh, we... Filmed most of our scenarios that we played are on the channel, but there are some scenarios we played we didn't film. Uh, there are some scenarios we filmed and lost the footage. There are some scenarios we played like three times in a row till we beat them, and we maybe posted one of the one of the loss one of the losses and one of the completions. Um, so the we have like forty something videos of Gloomhaven, but if we filmed everything we played, we'd have like eighty something probably uh, or more. Uh, of Gloomhaven because we even played after we beat the story we just kept playing we just kept playing other scenarios and doing side quests and other things you just can kind of never stop you can go play it all there are some scenarios you get locked out of in the story path but you could still go back to them and play them if you want and there's scenarios that you may not find that you could just play like once you beat the story you could just open up the book and just go play whatever uh, and you can replay old scenarios and stuff it's got a nice mechanic that even when you're playing the story you can replay scenarios and you just don't gain as much benefit from it. You still get the experience and you can help working up, leveling up your character, retiring your character. Um, but there's, you obviously just don't progress the story or anything like that. So it's kind of neat. There's like so much, that's why people love it. There's so many hours of play in Gloomhaven. It's just, do you want to put that into it? Like you have to like the systems in the game uh, to give it that much uh, time. But uh, yeah, you could own Gloomhaven. If you only played Gloomhaven, it would keep you busy for like a year. Uh, if you're just playing, like if you played no other board games and you just, you could just play Gloomhaven and keep it going. Not to mention like the hidden riddles in the game and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Dragon says, I love Gloomhaven, but since simplified, I passed on it. Friday, I may evaluate that choice. Yeah. Friday, you'll probably still only see the intro scenarios, so it might still look simplified. Uh, but I'm hoping by Saturday or Sunday, we can be into the scenarios where it's normal Gloomhaven. Uh, and we'll see that working. 
And Adam says, not to derail this discussion, but do you know what scenario for Mansion Madness you're doing tomorrow? Yeah, I said it already. It's the same one we did in the live stream, uh, the Cult of Sentinel Hill or whatever. We're going to retry that scenario. Since it was like for a couple reasons, we want to play it again uh, to see how the app changes it. We want to try different characters and the stream was lost. So we're just going to play the same scenario again and see if we can uh, figure it out. Uh, but, but, but. And there was no vote. I didn't end up doing a vote for it. I talked to Kyle and we just want to play the same one. Uh, so we're just going to go with what Kyle wants so that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're good. Dragon says, we played through Gloomhaven without permanent changes and ran through it twice since didn't unlock all the characters. Ah, I think I only have like two or three characters we haven't unlocked in playing it that are still, still sealed up. And then there's a few we didn't even play where we unlocked them and I just said, eh. Threw it to the side and play it, play the same character again. Uh, Janice says, have you heard about the all-in-one Scythe rule book? Yes, I have. Uh, that's cool that somebody has taken the time to put that together. Yeah, they're going to make a one spiral bound book with all the rules, with all the expansions in one book, including the Rise of Fenris stuff. I think that's crazy, which I think is a good idea. I was going to purchase it, but I, I don't think I need it. I don't think I need it. I'm okay going in all the separate rule books, but yeah, it's it's a nice idea. The only problem is like when I play Scythe, if I play it on the channel, I got to be careful with the Rise of Fenris spoily stuff. I don't know if I, how long I have to do that. So it's like I don't need to play with that stuff right now. But when I play off camera, I'm okay just having a bunch of rule books out and figuring it all out. That's fine. No, no problem, Adam. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to play the same one. Kyle's going to join us again. We're going to play some Mansions of Madness tomorrow night, right? It's tomorrow night. I lose track. What day is it? It is Wednesday. Yes, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but I think that's it. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow for some Viticulture Digital, then some Mansions of Madness, and then the following day for some Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. And then some, I think I schedule Monday. Uh, I'm back with some more um, solo of, we're going to try again, at some uh, Valley of the Dead King for Hexplorer using expansion stuff. I'm going to try a different character, a different strategy. No random gambles of uh, rolling dice to roam around the board when I'm like two hexes away from the Dead King. Uh, we're not going to mess that up again. We're going to have some fun. We'll play a nice long stream. I schedule it a little earlier. Uh, but tune in Monday for that. We're just going to have a long stream of playing Hexplorer and having some fun. Anyways, thanks a lot. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for everyone joining me live and chilling with us here. If you're watching this later, thanks a lot. Everyone hit that like button. It helps other people find these videos. Share these videos around to any groups or anything you know. Help spread the love of the channel. Help us grow. We hit 8,000 subscribers. Thank you, everyone who helped us reach that. You're all awesome. And yes, thanks to the Patreon supporters for backing us on Patreon. If you want to find any information about any of this stuff, links are down in the description below. Thanks all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.